Lisa? Check in with being consistent with the agenda. I want to check in with the board and ask if there are any uh, additions or changes to the agenda. Yes. We need to decide the Blue Cross Blue Shield plan tonight according to. We wait for Lisa. Yeah. Set up. yeah. All right. So noted, and we'll just circle back on that. Yeah. In other words, that's an action item. Yeah. We need to. And I have a recommendation okay. after talking. And then we have the warrants here that we're going to circulate. Right. Yeah. I have them right here. I also, I want tonight, we can do it under the round robin, try to see if we can find a date or yep. a series of dates that I can to deliberate. Yeah, we can do that. Highway 7. We can do that on round robin. Yeah. So we have um, a shade tree hearing that's the first item of business. Um, and Neil's going to convene that. Then we have. When, when the shade tree portion of the hearing is done, then I'll make some more remarks about kind of the order of events in our meeting tonight. But before, but I don't want to like use up Neil's time to do that. So Neil, I'm going to turn this over to you for shade tree preservation plan. Right? Um, I'm Neil Maker, I'm the tree warden, and um, I'll give a brief background. The the state passed a law pretty recently that changes how the tree warden works. And um, one of the things it did was allow towns to make these shade tree preservation plans. And so that's what we did. And the shade tree preservation plan does a number of things. It lays out kind of protocols for planting trees on town land. Um, it only pertains to trees in town properties or the right-of-ways, like right-of-ways of roads. Um, so planting and maintenance of trees, and then the big thing it does is define which trees are considered shade trees and kind of get a trial before they're cut or, or there's a process before anyone cuts or prunes a tree that's considered a shade tree. Um, and before the state law, it had been a little unclear what we were supposed to do, and the town had treated trees in the public right of way that were greater than six inches as, as shade trees, and <coughs> needing um, to approach a tree warden before you cut one of those trees. And that's pretty much what we've done in this plan, is stuck with that on town right of ways, and um, on town and properties doing a small a four inch cut off. So that's really the heart of the shade tree preservation plan. And uh, we met once before, had a hearing about it, and then we made changes, which were mostly procedural kinds of things. Um, and then this is the second go around. So I think if anyone, I'll just let people who have comments or questions about it. So this is a plan. So this is a plan, not an ordinance or a policy. That's right, and there's and and there's later on we will figure out an ordinance or it goes later. with this. Okay. Um, but the way the state law is written, it's a little confusing because the plan does have teeth, and it mostly in, the, in its definition of shade trees. Um, that's kind of the most meaningful thing that it does, is define which trees are shade trees. Okay. So do you want questions, comments? I have yeah. some questions. I don't have to go first. Somebody in the audience can go first if they want. Why don't, um, why, why don't we um, maybe go around the board in case, because um, that may illuminate some of the questions folks in the audience have. And then if you have questions or you want to speak on this topic, then I invite you to raise your hand, and I'm going to have you come and actually join us at the table to make a comment or ask a question of Neil, so that we can hear you and you can hear us better. Um, do Denise, why don't you ask your questions, then I'll turn to John, Mark, Rick, and then folks in the. In the okay, I'm sure there's quick answers to these. So on the first page, um, on the third sentence, properties. And it talks about promote and protect. Protect from what? What a note that I made. Uh, are we in the, the, the plan is session? intended. Yeah, the plan is intended to promote and protect. And my question is, protect from what? Oh, yeah. To so protect, you mean, know, public health and safety. Uh, so I guess it's 
protecting the public by treating our trees in ways that we need to to prevent disease and public safety of a tree is hazardous, allowing it to get cut. And yeah, it's kind of broad. <laughs> okay, under number two. Two. Okay. Two one. I'm sorry, did you want to speak? No. Um, it says ownership interest held by the agency of transportation. When would the agency of transportation have anything to do with our facilities? Trees that are in the right of way of state highways. Like, like Route 14. Yes. Like so that would be their call. Yes. And that that um is a definition from the state law there. Okay. Under number five, the third bullet. It says, or travel corridors that allow animals. Does that mean wildlife? Or? Mm -hmm. yeah, I thought. Um, under, it says relevant stakeholders, and it says utilities. So you mean utility companies like WAC or Hardwick? So that like is that. what I meant, yes. Okay. Um, planning, individual plantings. So that's residents, and that's on private. But we wouldn't tell private property owners what the plan, right? Unless no, this only pertains to trees that are in the right of town, way, right the way. town's right of way. Mm -hmm. So a private property owner shouldn't plant trees in the town right of way without coordinating with, with the tree warden. Right, and if they were going to do that, they'd have to get a permit to plant it. Anyway, because of right. it, yeah. And can you have a link here to where it says the rural road resilient rights of, you think we should have a link? You have a link for... Yeah, I wonder if that's already up on the website. It, I, it is on there. I looked. So that would be just a... I can do that, yeah. And then... Um, oh, right here where it says 15 days and we'll approve removal after that period if no appeals are made. So no hearing is needed? Yeah, that's the, the way the new state law <coughs> is written is that a tree that's a, that's a shade tree gets posted for 15 days, and then if nobody appeals it, then the tree warden automatically gives the person permission to cut the tree. Or not. Um, no, but if I, as a tree warden, I don't really have a say, um, although I could appeal the decision um, myself, and then it would go to the select board, but if no appeal yeah, is made, then it doesn't have to go to a hearing. So if there's kind of not stuff that's not controversial, yeah. you have to plan ahead, but you don't have to go through the whole hearing process. And one last comment. It says here, the tree warden and deputy tree warden should advise the landowners. It's not shall, it should. Yeah, that's right, because um, we're talking about the hazardous trees. Um, because people are allowed to cut hazardous trees without <coughs> notification um, and that's the way the state law is written so so the tree warden and deputy tree warden don't have to be involved in that decision but if there's any question about whether it's a shade tree then the person who wants to remove that or prune it has to contact the tree warden in order yeah. to get a, well thank you very much for doing this well done yeah Thank you. Yeah, hi. Thanks for doing this. It looks good. Um, do have some questions. So, um, before the shade tree, that a tree that's in the right of way that was not intentionally planted by a municipality um, or as part of a municipal program becomes uh, designated as a shade tree, it has to be designated by whom? In this plan, it's designated. If it's greater than six inches and it's in a public right away, it's a shade tree. Okay, yeah. so that it's designated by operation of this plan. Yes, exactly. That was my question. Yeah. Okay. Um, so if you approve, if you guys pass this plan, then tomorrow every tree in the right away that's greater than six inches. And if the town of Callis was looking to preserve, you know, the, the kind of the look, not. Kind of the, I'll call it the messy look. It's not the forces you want to hear, but <laughs> as, as opposed to the look 
Callus may have had a hundred years ago where there was space between them, and it was mowed, um, maybe even grazed. Um, before, if a property owner wanted to achieve that outcome, they would need to consult with the select board according to this plan or a tree board. They How would go about that. They would talk to the tree warden, and then it would be, we would, you know, kind of do a a notice for all of the trees that they wanted to remove at once. Okay. And they were and they would have to leave 15 days and then other town residents or whoever would have a chance to weigh yeah. in and appeal. And if there was an appeal, mm -hmm. if somebody didn't like the idea and appealed it, then the select board would decide it. There'd be a hearing and the select board would decide whether or not they could do it. So I, I think I didn't see it in here, but I think maybe a clarification is in order. Mm -hmm. um, that if trees just grow up kind of all on their own and not planted, yet they become, by designation in this plan, a shade tree, those trees are still those owned by the property owner. That all that yes. may need is a question of municipal, municipally planted ones, but those trees are still owned by the property owner. Even the municipally planted trees, the tree is owned by the property <coughs> owner but not, not the rights to manage it. Right, the town exactly. So I, the I, I think that should be made clear. And it's also helpful to, I think our current road crew knows this, but future road crews may not realize that the wood on, on those, that, that results from, you know, work done on along the roadsides or right of ways, whatever that necessary work that might involve some tree cutting. Um, or a tree that falls, that that wood is owned by the property owner, and that um, I just think the public needs to understand that, that the property owner has the discretion to keep it or leave it or give it away, um, and the town is not on that. Um, and I guess my last question is more of this is maybe next steps tree planting. I know some probably 15 years ago, in fact, I stumbled on it looking through some old minutes. Um, not a, just a few days ago, by happenstance, um, we had a discussion at this board um, regarding reestablishment of the, sh the historic shade trees that we've seen fall down and not get reestablished. And the Conservation Commission was interested in that. Um, and I think at the time we, we said, you know, we should look into see if this grant money is available and maybe come up with an, an approach to. To doing that, reviving mm -hmm. you know our historic look along our roads um, by having the town put a program together, however that would work. You know. So, are you anticipating is that as a next step, or maybe would you want to add that here as a recommendation that, or you don't do that? You have plan you can recommend, yeah, or anticipate. Um, there has been talk about that, and I think it hasn't really been clear. To you. Be on that committee, or kind of how in the conservation commission there's been yeah. conversation about yeah. that. Um, and I see the the plans, like what the plan does, is makes clear kind of who should be involved in that process mm -hmm. and how that would work and allows it to happen. Um, and there is a section in here. Yeah. And I think that tree planting, fine. tree planting, and. Um, Making clear that you know the road crew's got to be involved if you're planting along the roads yep. or doing that kind of thing, so that they can <coughs> give input about how it's going to be maintained mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. Um, but we kind of haven't taken that step of really getting organized about the planning like that yet. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's it. What? I don't have any questions. I think it's great. I do have one small drafting suggestion. Yeah. Uh, in paragraph seven, tree removal. Um, you know, the first sentence just makes it look like well, you it's up to you. You approve it. Healthy shade tree is not blah 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 blah. Uh, cannot be removed without the approval from the tree board. Mm -hmm. But in fact, that's not the case. It's the subsequent. It's not up to you to approve it or not. Approve well, I. I, you have I have to, to notice it. it. That's all you have to do is notice it, and yeah. if no one objects, it's approved. I have to give a written approval after right. the notice. Period. Right. Yeah. So I think you might want to say something like, because people don't always read all the way down to the bottom of the 
here. <laughs> you might want to say something like, you know, without following, without following, the, 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 following the process, the, notifying the tree board and following the process set forth, you know, in this paragraph uh -huh. or something like that. It's yeah. just a small change. That's a good idea. Change. Yeah. Rick? No, the old, this is great. I think the old, these, all these suggestions are really good as well. It's good, they're good calls. I, the only thing I think, you know, in terms of uh, we're coming in this time with the Emerald Ashboard, and it's here now. So it, uh, how we're going to be implementing, you know, some roadside cutting and so on. Yeah. We'll to mm -hmm. don't tell me this carefully. Yeah. I but those trees, because we're in that quarantine zone for them, mm -hmm. um, by state law, those are exempt. And so, so those don't need to go through that process before removal. That sounds good. Which makes it a little easier. Like the, the road crew can just kind of start cutting ash trees along the road if they want to. You kind of treat like a hazard tree, basically. Yeah, like that. yeah, they're basically considered a hazard tree because they're. Have you marked the significant ash trees that are hazard on the site? No, there are thousands of them. Um, mm -hmm. So I think it's something that we'll have to do kind of a road stretch at a time. Okay. But. Okay, so now I, I, I want to open up, um, Doug, I mentioned before you came in, if you have a question or a comment for the board on, on this topic or as we move forward to the rest of the meeting, process improvement, I'm going to invite you to come forward. So Doug, feel free, um, not just feel free, please do. Come and sit at the table so we can hear you. You can clearly introduce yourself to us, and so Lisa can hear you, and we'll hear your question. Okay, I think everybody knows me. Have a seat. We say you a special this seat. This is on tree ordinance, right? This is on tree ordinance, right, Doug? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Talk about trees. I just cut out two trees. Two trees across my house. Kill me. They're dead. They're dying. They're maple trees. Maple. Maple trees. Big maples. I mean, they, I don't know them. They're probably 300 years old. Oh, it's sad. Yeah, it's sad. I planted in, in a few years ago. I don't know how many years ago. They, the game, the tree warden marked all the trees down here through the adamant and marked them. You remember that? Mm -hmm. Therefore, they had a fit over that. They had a fit over that. Now, she and I broke down there one night, and we pointed out 19 trees, maple trees, were dying on our, our lightning ridge from, from Tucker Road to Gray Road. 19 maple trees. The reason they're dying is because we're putting salt on the roads. We're salt on the roads. That's so, why those trees are dying. So, Doug, I'm going to stop you there, okay. if you don't mind. Because I don't think that the salt is part, I think that what Doug is talking about is outside of the scope of the, of the shade tree preservation plan. Yeah. Is that correct? Am I correct? Yeah, that? that's true. The, the plan would, you know, if you, if you want to manage those trees or remove them or something, the plan would kind of come into play and in how you go about doing that. Um, but the road, you know, road, road crews, management of those trees is subject to the plan, but not there. Not to be salting or yeah. But 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 Doug, hold that thought because because not not right now. I think that would take us down a path that we may not have time to get into fully. But we're all very aware of the issues that you're raising related to tree health. Do you have a question or, or a comment related to the tree plan? And if you don't, then I want to... Well, I just get in on the back end of it, so I don't know too much about what you're talking about. But I knew when they, I, know, I do know this. I do know when they grade and plow the roads, they scatter the trees up and they're going to die. And they do it on purpose. <laughs> I know. Yeah, there you go. Denise is giving you a copy of the plan. We're not going to pass it no. tonight. Because we're already here. You know, and I've been in this town for 80 years. 
No, you haven't. Seven, nine, and three months or something like that. There we go. Uh, we, we require honesty. <laughs> speak to so I know what this town looks like. I know what this town looks like. And I'm sick of people moving into this town and I want to vacate to New York City. Or, I, you know, I'm sick. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Doug. Uh, okay, uh, let me just get a show of hands of how many other people so I can make sure we're kind of pacing ourselves. I'm mm -hmm. seeing on the, on, the, on the Shade Tree Preservation Plan. Okay, a couple more folks. Uh, Scott, why don't you come up and join us? Introduce yourself to the music and caption. I'm Scott Bassage, the Blue East Dallas. And I had the privilege of watching Neil produce this document with an incredible amount of patience. <laughs> how, many, how many drafts do you think we've been through? Oh, I don't know. It's We're funny. on the slow track. Yeah. <laughs> many, 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 many drafts. And uh, Denise, I, I compliment you. I mean, you're, you obviously paid close attention and read it carefully. It's, that was great. Oh, thank you. Good going. Um, I just maybe have one comment in the middle of page three. Uh, shade trees should also be protected from mechanical and salt damage wherever possible. Should. Um, I hope the select board will remember that that's here and when the time comes for an ordinance, um, put some teeth into that because um, the trees along my road, every single one has suffered mechanical damage. Uh, I have uh, photographic documentation of the trees that Betty was talking about, um, mm -hmm. which I'd be glad to share with anybody. There were at least 25 of them. So please, when this becomes an ordinance, let's <coughs> remember this important part of what, what, uh, what we're trying to do with our shade trees. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. You know, one just thought this language often in plants, Scott, our plants tend to use words like should or could. And I think when you get down to the ordinance, it should be shall or sh shall means shall and should means well if you feel like it. You know, so when we split the, when we get clear is when the ordinance comes in. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that leads to one of the comments I have made. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I think in here, shall is basically, I, I think I pretty much only used shall for things that are in state statute, like yeah. already. Okay. And that's but the, it, we're introducing the concepts kind of incrementally. That's good. Dan, you want to come forward and, and speak with us? Sure. I'm Dan Singleton. Mm -hmm. So some of my comments I made last time, uh, I'm not entirely sure. Are we talking about the March version that we had last time or the May version? <clears throat> we made a few changes and some of those are will be yeah, additional made comments. Yeah, a few changes as recently as a month ago or something like that. Okay. Um, uh, so then I'm pretty much just, just comments then. Uh, really going back to the designation of a shade tree, I really think that the the blanket six inch diameter and up is really not correct. I, don't, I think it can, I think the intent of the document can be achieved in other ways without that. It's not really based on science. <clears throat> it's based on the, I don't know what you guys could probably tell me, we must have had to come to it as a conclusion with the Conservation Commission. Um, it's also, I don't think, consistent with the statute as well. Because uh, I think <clears throat> you'd have a hard sell. With, uh, you know, it's easy to make a zone, like it calls for the ability to make uh, zones or areas where all the sh trees are shade trees. Um, but then it goes on to give it, give the ability to have an individual tree, but not really every tree. And then <clears throat> that individual tree, you know, it calls for language of, you know, it has to be critical. Um, I don't know, let's see if I can get it, pull it back up, but I don't have a copy in front of me. Bear with me. And so it's, uh, the tree is critical to the cultural, historical, or aesthetic character of the municipality. And so, I don't know if, you know, if, if you can prove that for every tree there. I think, I really think you can, you know, there are certain places in town that every tree really almost should be protected in some form. 
um, before it's cut down to that due process. But there's a lot of places that really um, most trees, if they disappeared, wouldn't be an issue. I know there was some concern about the the road crew having you know some sideboards and some regula regulation. This document does that the way it's written now. Um, but what you've taken away is the landowner's ability to manage their trees. Um, and it's not just the trees or the trunks in the right of way. One branch in that three rod right of way is now also protected. Um, <clears throat> so I, you know it's, it's a big reach from what the chain from what we had in the past. I'm not sure it's as big of a problem. You know, it's, it's more uh, that it, uh, and this document makes it out to be, um, you know, and so for some landowners, it's not a big deal. They're probably not going to manage their trees anyway. Uh, some people actively manage all their trees. It can be a big deal. The fines associated with it are real. They're not tiny. Um, you know, for example, what Doug did on his property like three years ago, that's in the tens of thousands of dollars if he did that <clears throat> without permission. Um, there's also no civil cultural exemptions for this. And so potentially you run into that same situation where, um, you know, using Lightning Ridge as an example again, roadside trees were cut as part of an approved civil cultural plan through forest management. Um, you know, it doesn't take much through this process and plan to stop that. And so, you know, it's, it, there's no justification for an appeal. It just has to be, I don't want the tree cut, just to my knowledge, and then it goes to the select board and the select board can just use their own discretion. Um, when essentially, you know, I think landowners should also be allowed to practice civil culture. There is a statute, Neil and I sort of went back and forth um, through some emails about it. League of Cities and Towns came up with their clarification of it, which said that the ordinance prevails. I don't know if that, if you ever really pushed it, if it would, but it'd be nice to see some sort of civil cultural exemption included in this for people that, that manage their right of way trees is through forest management. Yeah, but yeah, I know when we were when we were figuring this out, uh, um, we wanted to find a balance between making sure that pe trees that people care about because they are a community resource didn't get cut needlessly, and also giving people the flexibility to do what they wanted, um, and we opted for kind of this blanket six instinct because it was it was really arbitrary to try to decide which trees along the road. It wasn't like there are certain sections of road where you could say, well, in the village it is, but outside none of them are. It was clear in the Conservation Commission that like there are trees along all of our roads that are important to people. And it was hard to pick those out without couldn't designate them ahead of time. And so the downside is that you have to think ahead and give a 15 day wait period before you cut. And you're at the beginning of the select board. So if you, you know, if someone was really didn't like your civil culture or whatever. Um, yeah, so that's why we came to that. Uh, and I hear what you're saying about the language. We did work with the Bramante the um, Vermont Urban Community Forestry, who's been kind of the uh, state's interface with the tree wardens and the tree warden law. And I know we're not the only town who took that six inch approach. And they kind of advised us that that was a, a legitimate way to go about it. So I think it is, a, I think it's an okay language in that sense. Um, but I hear where you're coming from, and I also feel like it kind of is further on that end than I would like it to be, but we couldn't find a compromise that would do it. They haven't tried either, though. It hasn't gone out to public, public comment. It was built behind closed doors. Not really closed, because anybody can come to the Conservation Commission, correct? Yeah, it was Just like they can come here. maybe 10 different uh, Conservation Commission meetings. Right. And you know, so so most people, I think, when this goes through, different... aren't going to be aware of it until they're in trouble, basically. Uh -huh. You know, fuel's going to be six bucks a gallon this winter. Uh, or somebody wanting to maintain their fence row or hedge row, and then all of a sudden, you know, this passes, and then somebody has to enforce it, and then it goes back to fining on a per tree basis. I mean, that's that's what we've been doing. It's the the six inch thing is not is not new. There was no fine, and then it, there was, it was removed last July, right? And so technically, even today, I can go out and cut any tree I want, and you know, I'm not sure that's right either, but for 
there's a lot of people that did what they wanted to, even with the last reiteration, because it really didn't have any teeth. It had some, but not, not it a It didn't unless somebody took them apart. Right. Is there, Neil, some of the, what, I, what I've heard conversationally in other places is that some of the, uh, some of the landowner um, flexibility was actually removed by statute. Um, am, am I, is that a misunderstanding? <clears throat> so, um, so for example, um, Dan said the, the landowner doesn't own the tree anymore, but I, I, I somewhere understood that that was gone with the statute, not, not necessarily with our plan. Um, so I'm not, looking for where yeah, the words really. What, no, is that wrong? The way okay. it was is that shade trees were just not defined, and it was unclear okay. what trees were shade trees. And the legal precedent was every tree is a shade tree. Um, and there were a few court cases in different towns in Vermont where that was established. Even if you cut a two-inch tree, it was a shade tree. And Callis had a our. Um, roadside tree standards, which set this six inch diameter limit that we considered okay. that a shade tree. And that's what we had been using. Um, but there wasn't, there wasn't an ordinance behind it. I think this is what Dan was saying, that if you cut a tree that was a shade tree, you weren't gonna get in trouble unless someone cared enough to go through the court. And then you'd have to pay a bunch. Right, and we still don't have an ordinance. We still don't have an ordinance. So I wanted to ask Dan a question. You said about getting this Oh, Doug, Doug has my copy. Um, out to the public, how would you recommend we do that? Right, I don't. <laughs> most people don't care about trees, right? Until they uh, until, 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 until they do, uh, right. you know, until it's bit, until it's in the face. Um, and so I don't know. I mean, maybe it's presented to, a, you know, obviously we could we post it at our normal places. That's where we what we do now. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's held off until discussion at, at you know town meeting or something like that. Um, you know, outreach through the Conservation Commission, uh, similar to what you guys did with the ash trees, where you flagged the ash trees and hung signs. I, you know, I don't know, but it, I mean, most people, like I said, aren't going to care until they have to. Yeah. You know. Um, and I, I, I also like we did try to find compromises, like <coughs> what you're talking about, and like looking at just main canopy trees or using, I don't know if you're familiar with the Shoreland Protection Act has this complicated point system. Yeah, that didn't work. They were all non-starters. Um, so I'm certainly open to ideas, and I think the Conservation Commission is too. Um, but this felt like the best compromise to us because we couldn't, it felt like one way or the other. Either you say like, the trees in this part of town are protected, but these ones aren't, or you set a diameter. Right. I think it could be, to me, I think it could be some hybrid approach where it's those critical sort of, not really urban, but uh, our historical village districts, shoreland protections, wetlands, things like that, those areas are protected. And then outside of that, it's, um, you know, even maybe diameter targets. Most people don't notice their, you know, some trees, but every, if, you know, it's the, when you start hey, removing enough of them, um, you know, say trees per lineal feet of road, then it catches their attention. One or two isn't going to make a difference. When you start taking the big ones out, it's going to be a problem. Yeah. Uh, but there's a lot of trees, you know, to pick another arbitrary number, I don't know what that is, but, you know, <laughs> a, a smaller diameter classes where there's more trees per lineal feet of road aren't going to make a difference. Uh, you know, not substantial to enough to make it a, a critical tree, yeah. basically. My, my experience doing the, as the tree warden has been that it's like, I can't always tell that there are trees that people care about and there are trees, there are a lot of trees that people don't really care about right. and there are some that they do and it's hard to you know, figure out which are the ones that people care about. Thanks, Dan. Yep. Thank you very much. Can you make multiple uh, trees the same to one application? In other yes. Words, so, if, because of solar culture, I went through my property, including right away and uh, with my, uh, and, and, and marked 20 trees, I could come, I could do all at once. Yes. Okay, thank yeah. you. And the silver culture thing is a little bit of a question, but the Vermont League of Cities and Towns says that if you were 
doing it for civil cultural purposes, you would not have to follow these rules that kind of supersedes it. Right. So that answers my question. You can still tap the trees. You can tap them. You can manage them otherwise just to improve the tree health and so <laughs> Yeah, it's a civil cultural thing. Yeah. That's what okay. the League of Cities and Towns says. It's not entirely clear to me or Dan. Maybe we could, statute. let's see, so we should probably incorporate that those kinds of informative statements in this plan. The civil cultural one? Because, um, you know, we shouldn't be, yeah. that they advise us and then we should be informing. This is the, the informational document for our people. And so they, they should come away after reading this, understanding the whole program, and what's in and what's out, and not having to go elsewhere. Sure, this is not an action item? Not an action Thank item. You. Okay. Nope. So Thank you. we're going to have a comment period that's going to be open for a while, so we it's, can take a written comment. It's open until until we decide to you know put it back on the agenda. Agenda and yeah, I think we should allow like 30 or 45 days. To yeah, up I'm not hearing. I mean, and we can post um, we can post a link to it on the front on the home page of the website. Mm -hmm. And Neil, you could post something, just a link front porch on forum. front porch forum. Okay. If so, you if you want to, if you want to, with, with um, uh, contact information in terms of Neil yeah. receiving the comments. Yeah. And yeah. Um, we could have copies available, like at the town office, we could print off copies and put them on that little table out by the front door. Mm -hmm. There's one there now, but... Yeah, we might want to add some, some extra copies. Um, and maybe it's just letting people know that's where they can pick up the copies. If they, yes, they might not have a printer, right. yeah. but just a short post on Front Porch Forum, you know, just the facts. Here's the link. Yeah. You know, the comment period is going to be open for another... 45 days or something, yep, and then we can calendar it to put it back on the agenda. Yep. Do we approve this plan? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so you probably want to not. Or not. Or yeah. not. Yeah. 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 But I mean, it's, it's in our jurisdiction. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so I'm going to, oh wait, we don't have our December meetings on here yet, but I'm going to, I'm going to, I know, made a note to put it on the so first meeting of December. Yeah. Towards the end of November, beginning of December. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So okay. All right, why don't we, Neil, thank you very much. Yeah, I know you want to work into it, thank you. Yeah, yeah. All the comments are not easy. No. <laughs> thank you to the Conservation Commission. Yeah. So before we head into the, the, the rest of the, the body of our um, meeting, I want to just make a couple of um, uh, pre preface comments. Um, we have a, as we promised at our last meeting, we have tonight an expanded period of public comment. Usually our public comment is 15 minutes. Tonight we have half an hour. Uh, on November 14th, we're planning to allow even more than that um, for public comment. Uh, I want to point out a couple of other things. I'm, I'm holding a document that some of you may be familiar with, you may not be familiar with. It's called the Town of Palace Select Board. We call it rules and procedure. This is something that we, we visit, redo, and adopt um, generally every year. This copy was adopted by this board in April after quite a few working sessions on how we want to conduct ourselves as a board. It's on the select board's landing page of the website. And this is where the 15 minutes of public comment comes from. I wanted to say that out loud because it's it's, uh, I realize there's a lot that we do and a lot of the ways that we conduct our business here that is normal and we take for granted and it may not be and it's something that you are familiar with or that you expect. So the 15 minutes comes from our rules of procedure. And the, the procedures say that if a topic requires more time in another meeting, then we, you know, we look for that time in the agenda. Um, a really good example of that is roadside invasives. Peter Harvey came to us during public comment at one period at one point and said, I want to talk about invasives, good topic. We put it on the agenda and spend more time on it in another meeting. Um, so I wanted to say that. And if so I have one only I've printed out one copy, but as I said, it's on the uh, the select page 
of the Town of Palace website. Tonight we have, um, tonight we do have about half an hour. We have other items on the agenda, as we usually do. Um, and I'll say more about how we're going to run our the half hour that we have tonight when when we get to that point on the agenda. But I wanted to just set that expectation for everybody now because we're not doing the public comment now. We're going to give you a chance to hear some of the business items that we are working on before we shift to public comment. Uh, so without any further ado, I'm going to turn to Wendy Wilton. Wendy is here with us from NEMRIC, the New England Municipal Resource Center. Wendy has been helping us enormously um, get the work of our town done. NEMRIC always helps us, and they're helping us even more now because we are in the process of, you know, recruiting the treasurer. So Wendy's been helping out with that. Wendy, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Wendy Wilton. Um, it just as a little background, I was the treasurer for the city of Rutland for ten and a half years, up until a few years ago when I transitioned to um, a federal responsibility. And now I've, uh, I'm back in the municipal world. I work for Nemerick uh, with the experience that I had previously. And Nemerick is New England Municipal Resource Center. It sounds like a nonprofit or something, but it's not. Ernie Saunders owns the company, and he started it many, many years ago, recognizing that there wasn't a, a really good software program for municipalities, so he created that. It's basically a general ledger with a whole bunch of different modules for payroll, and accounts payable, accounts receivable, and all kinds of tax, and all kinds of other things. So that's why it's a, it's a start to finish um, uh, product for a municipality, particularly geared to Vermont, because we can handle all the state payments and homesteads that come from the state. So in a nutshell, it's what it is. We also offer consulting services, which is what I'm doing for Catalyst, that I am actually your interim treasurer, except I don't have signing authority, but I'm handling all of the other financial tasks that the treasurer did, plus a few more. And that's one of the reasons why I did want to come and talk to the select board tonight to give you an update that the public can hear also on where we're at with that. Um, when um, the treasurer uh, retired, um, the select board asked Nemeric to uh, step in to be the interim treasurer in the sense that we could do some basic functions and keep things rolling, keep the payroll done, keep the, the bills paid for the town, keeping the lights on, so to speak. And we agreed to do that. And we have a contract with the town. And I was the person selected. Cynthia, uh, who's, who's the manager of the support group, I work for her, um, started here with me. And then eventually she got so busy with other towns that needed that help too. She asked me to just take the whole project, and I said, sure, I can do that. You were not the only ones? Pardon? We're not the I only ones. We're not. we're not the only ones. You were not. And that's one of the reasons why we found it difficult to find a treasurer, is that there's a real lack of um, skilled people in Vermont, particularly, but probably nationwide, uh, that have financial experience that can step into a role like this and actually do these kinds of jobs. So um, anyway, uh, so I've been here working on Catalyst since sometime in June and really took it over full time in July. Um, so what the contract entails is that we do payroll, accounts payable, we do reconciliation, and some general ledger management. So that's basically keeping the lights on. It's kind of a bookkeeper kind of activity in that sense that we're, we're just doing some really routine kinds of things. But because we've gone so long now, uh, without a, a full charge, full-time treasurer in this role, I have, I have had to take on a few more things, which I was fine and I'm happy to do, but it also means that, um, that my role has expanded some. But there, even then, there are some things that aren't getting done. And I will say that it's also been a team effort. Uh, Denise uh, collects the timesheets and puts together a timesheet each week for me to do the payroll, which is a great separation of duty. You're doing that, author uh, you know, the authorization part, and then I'm uh, conducting the rest of the payroll. And at the town office, your uh, your town clerk and your assistant clerk have been extremely helpful. Barbara, I see, is here tonight, and she they have done a really good job with the deposits. I'm not here every day. And doing tax deposits, once that tax bill goes out, you need somebody who's there every day to accept those payments, get them in the system, and get them to the bank routinely. So they've been really helpful on that for both the tax deposits and the clerk deposits, which previously, Sandra was doing all of that. Um, also, once you send out tax bills, and I hope people do appreciate this, I, I see it in the office, 
is that they've also been able, especially Barbara, has been able to handle all the questions. You send out a tax bill, well, that's not the end of it. People lose the tax bill, uh, some relative out of town is actually paying the taxes, they need another copy, the um, mortgage companies are calling all the time, can you verify this tax bill? You know, it goes on and on and on. So there's a lot of care and feeding that happens from the time you send out the tax bill till the time those taxes are due, and then they become delinquent after that. So, and then it becomes a delinquent tax collector's right. job, right? Which but Sandra is still doing right. that. Which is great. But in that interim period, which is going to last till probably the end of November, there's a lot of care and feeding that happens every day in the office. The other thing that, um, that uh, Jan has been doing, I think I saw her, oh, there she is. Yeah. Uh, as one of the listers, she's also taken on the responsibility of downloading those homesteads and those state payments, which is really important because if you don't do that routinely, you don't have an up-to-date tax bill for your, your uh, taxpayers. So, can I say? Sure. And my error, I forgot to thank Jan when we were thanking other people for their extra efforts. I didn't realize that it wasn't a lister function that Sandra had been doing what Jan is currently doing. Well, towns, all towns do that differently. In so, some towns, the list right, is but different. I want to know that we appreciate what she's, yeah. what she's doing is I didn't understand that that wasn't a list of function. So. And, then, and anybody else we might be forgetting. Right, <laughs> yeah, we might forget other people, and I apologize. I'm trying to thank everybody. Anyway, uh, so that's been great. It's been a team effort, you know, um, with all those people involved and probably some other folks that I don't know about, but uh, certainly to keep the financial uh, ship, you know, sailing in the right direction. And I should say, I asked Wendy a ton of questions. She's always helpful, always knowledgeable, always friendly. So I really appreciate that because I ask a lot you. of questions. And I'm happy to. <laughs> Some of the significant tasks that, if from my viewpoint, aren't being covered adequately right now. One is insurance management. Uh, the Vermont League of Cities and Towns renewal was due in early October. And uh, that's something that's going to take, uh, probably the select will take a look at. I can handle the payroll piece, right, because it's pretty much getting the reports and filling it out. But the other stuff, which is your fixed assets, DMs, all those kinds of things, I don't have enough institutional knowledge about your town to complete that. So there's that, there's the renewal we're gonna talk about tonight, but also grants management. Again, I don't have enough experience um, with your town to know what's happening there. I've informed Denise, I found a bunch of records today. Amazing. Um, grant files. I don't know how extensive they are. You look at them, you know, uh, but they're there and they're in the town office. So someone should probably, um, you know, uh, start looking at those. Um, but but it's something that's beyond the scope of the of the contract that we penned. Uh, if uh, the town wants us to go to go forward to those things beyond, you know, to get into the grant files and that kind of thing, it, it would be a lot more time, and it would probably mean that we really have to think about our relationship. You know, in terms of maybe we need to update that contract and we need to have a discussion. I certainly need to discuss it with them. But I'm also finding, I try to get here, I, I'm here at least one day a week. Some weeks I'm here for two days because there's so much to do. And, and uh, I, I really push to the end of the day to get everything accomplished when I'm here. So that certainly tells me, and the letter that I gave to you tonight I want to indicate that this is a, a full-time, there is a need for a full-time, full-charge treasurer in this town. And uh, because of all of the things that do need to get done. And uh, so I'm, pre and I'm pretty effective at this job, so, and I'm finding, I'm finding I'm pressed doing it. And beyond the days that I'm here, I do a lot of work remotely. For example, payrolls, all done remotely. Because I was doing that before I came into the, the, uh, you know, the, the full on-site work. So some things can be done remotely, but it's a little slow because the access to the internet um, here um, through what I would need to do through remote is not easy. If, uh, if the town was able to get better internet service to the town office, that might help Working because hard. someone, uh, even if you hired, uh, you know, if you kept with us, or you hired a town remotely to do stuff, or you hired a treasurer and there's bad weather or if there's another COVID pandemic or whatever, you have remote access to um, and, and good remote access to do work and get it done. So those are things to So we do not have that now. We do not. But when we get the, my question is when CD Fiber puts in that line, that should fix that problem. Oh yeah, if you put fiber optic, it would be sure It's, it's, it's a function of the internet scheme and capacity, not a function of program, not a programmatic. Right. 
Yeah. 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 Okay, I just want to make sure there weren't, there weren't some other things yeah. we needed to. No, I don't think so. Right now, just to give you a, a window on this, what I need to do to connect a callus to do remote work, I call the town office, they go over to the treasurer's computer, right, and they go to the Nemeric website and say connect with Nemeric, and, we can, and I'm doing it like I'm share screening, that's really what we're doing, and that's why it's so slow. It's very, it's very slow if you've ever worked on an app like that. It's not the same. I, I can get some much more here done every day more effectively when I'm here. Payroll again is okay. So it's not too so bad. It's really important you fully understand this and you're probably going to interview you again because we are in the process of interviewing folks, applicants mm -hmm. for the treasurer's position and treasurer business manager. manager position. And um, the, the question is how much office time do they need to spend? How much can this job can be handled remotely? And you know we're not confident. We don't have a confident answer to give them. Um, I, I I tell the applicants you know figure four days a week um, in the office, and if it's less than that, great. Um, but you sh you know if we need you every day, that's where you need to be here um, five days a week. You, know, you, so. you don't have the capacity for someone to work remotely if you hire somebody. Right now, right You're now, right. right. So right. that's you go to the wood. I mean, Sandra was doing a lot remotely Sandra when a lot when the pandemic hit. She had a she did a lot remotely. How was she able to do it? I don't know. She did it. She came yeah. out on Fridays. Mm -hmm. There's also, I mean, and I don't think we need to go too much into the weeds on this, but you're describing different kind of aspects of work. So, like the grants piece that you just mentioned, being this whole other piece. So I want to just look at folks out there and say. Um, uh, Wendy said somebody <laughs> needs to spend, a, you know, you said it's a chunk of time. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something that we envision being part of the public works structure. <coughs> at different times, imagine it being part of the treasurer. I think how all of different pieces of work get done it varies enormously in towns. You know, how they kind of plug pieces apart. So my point is that there's a grant management opportunity that's, that is fits well with any number of functions, but also could be standalone. If somebody says, "Ooh, I had that had that background, and I'd love to volunteer yeah. for uh, to help the town out," um, there's a there's an opportunity. Anyway, so right. I mean, we envisioned, as I said to Wendy earlier, we envisioned the director of public works doing the grants management mm -hmm. the file kind of piece of it, mm -hmm. and the treasurer would. Do the I mean, they get the grant function. The grant the treasurer gets the grants and the treasurer manages the documentation. That's a huge piece of work we envision the director of public works doing. Can I make a point here? The treasurer should really be responsible for the financial reporting. Right. So whoever's managing the grant, apply for it, is working that grant is actually responsible for making sure that they are submitting the right paperwork to the treasurer so it ends up where? In here, right? This is your financial report. So this is all about expenditures. Now expenditures, if somebody's managing a grant, you're gonna code an invoice that needs to get paid. So that's automatically gonna end up here. Right. If it's a revenue and they've, a, they've gone for a, fund, a reimbursement grant, then they're gonna report to state
10 more minutes um, okay. from, here from you about the, um, the specific financial health of the town right now and for you to you know, let us know about these various action items that we have to find tonight. Sure enough. I mean, I can wrap up this pretty quick, but I just wanted to make you aware I see a need for a full-time, full-charge treasurer in this town based on what the previous tre treasurer used to do, you know, uh, and, and things that I see that, you know, really need some support and some help. Um, and I understand you want to fill this vacancy, and that's, it's really right, an important top priority for you. Right. Um, I can help with a job description, maybe try to pull the tighten that up a little bit. If that's why the offer to review the job description, which I think is a great offer. That might help. Yeah. Just real quick. Um, so when we put together this treasurer business slash business manager position, we evaluated what other similarly sized and situated towns <laughs> are doing, yeah. and pretty much to a number, all their treasures were half time. Um, so I was wondering in your Numeric experience. Uh, do you think those towns are falling behind and not getting stuff done, or do we, do we take on a lot more here? Why? Why do you think Callis is so demanding of treasurer resources? There must be. I mean, every towns are obligated to make the same reports. Yeah. And stay in. Uh, you've got a lot of grants. I will have to say that for a small town, you yeah. do have quite yeah. a few. Yeah. So that's another another thing that somebody has to pick up somewhere. <coughs> but I would say. Um, you know, just based on the hours I'm spending, maybe in those towns, are, is the clerk doing some things that the treasurer isn't? I mean, I would have no way. It's, I think it's, it's what I said earlier. I think it's it's like yeah. looking at what is the whole scope of duties and whether our, you know, whether our treasurer was going beyond what some other towns do as treasurer. Um, we've seen models. There's any number of, of models. I. Um, but yeah, definitely, um, we felt like there was opportunity, especially if we move, you know, a focus of grants management out of and, and make that clearly. I mean, I understand there has to be a communication link between the treasurer and the public works director, mm -hmm. and then some other things that could be decentralized. It used to be wholly treasurer and callous, and, and and certainly looking for efficiencies. But yeah, we looked at. I don't know, three or four. Yeah, we, we did a lot. We've we done a lot of research. Of research and it, in surrounding towns. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Without and knowing yeah. what their specific kind of. Right. Yeah. We look at population. Oh, no. Tax base, yeah. Yeah. yeah, tax base and, yeah, full well, population. Um, anyway, so let's make sure that we have a chance to. This is important for us to hear about the. the the, the uh, financial, where we are from a financial health perspective. And then we move on to the other items. And then sign the other okay. things, yeah. And then in terms of developing this list of duties might be very helpful to you when you think about that job description. And there are a few things on here, like the first one, deposits, cash receipts, that was not part of our original contract. Um, the property tax uh, business was not part of the original contract. And uh, there's some other activities that weren't as well. And I also, thought some of these things might be good for you to think about um, as you as you go forward. So I hope that's helpful to you. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Now let's get to um, this is the first quarter report. So it's the period that uh, ended September 30th, 2022. Um, the general fund, uh, what you have for general fund is balance sheet and year-to-date revenue and expense. Highway fund balance sheet and year-to-date revenue and expense. The due to the front report and combining balance sheets. Uh, for all your funds, including some of the miscellaneous funds. So the first thing I would point out to you on the balance sheet for the general fund, which is the first page with tiny, tiny numbers on it. I'm so sorry they're small. Uh, at the end of September, uh, the town of Calumas had a little over $3 million in the bank. Don't get too excited about that because that's offset by what was due to the school for the first payment, which is pretty close to a million and a half dollars. That payment was made in early October. October. Um, within the 20 days required by state law, okay? There'll be another payment, so next month we will also see this due to school back again because that second payment will be due after the second payment is collected in November. Um, you have a uh, total fund balance of about a half a million dollars, but you're still pretty early in the year. So, um, any questions about that? Does that seem, I mean, in terms of fiscal health, how does that half a million dollar fund balance seem to you? Well, you're early in the year, so hmm. 
I, I wouldn't really, uh, it, it's fine, okay? It means you, you have, you know, fund balance, so you're not negative there. That's good. You're not deficit. <laughs> so we don't have to borrow an anticipation of taxes anymore. Right, and um, you collected uh, your first payment effectively is also what this means, okay? Because there's only, what, five, six people on the delinquent taxes. That's not bad. Yeah, that's, that's not amazing. Not bad. It's very good. That may change after November 15th, but, uh, but I'm thinking that looks pretty good. Thank now, you. also understand, you operate pool cash. Now, what does that mean? It means your general fund bank account, that $3 million, is not just general fund money. Look down under your assets due to you from. You can see a negative number there. That is the obliga obligation on that $3 million by your other funds in your general ledger. Any questions about that? Where are you? First page. First yep. page. Balance yeah. sheet. Assets. assets. Yeah, no, three million dollars. Got it. Okay. Yep. Nine hundred. It's about a million dollars. Yep. Is due to other funds. For example, right. your ARPA fund has quite a bit of money in it, right? So that's part of that nine hundred ninety-five thousand. Right. So we're we're good there. On uh, revenue versus expense, um, that's looking fine. Revenue for the general fund, which is primarily taxes, is thirty-four percent, and your expense year to date is thirty percent. You always have a little bit more expense in the beginning of the year because there are some things that are due at the beginning of the year. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, highway fund is the next one. And you can look at the detail there because you've got every single GL line. You are on page now. Uh, they're not numbered, but look for highway. They are at the top. They are at the top, top right. Six, yeah. Three of six. Right. So you're on, you're on highway. Highway fund. Now the balance sheet for highway fund is a little different because it's really sort of a corollary to your general fund. It is another form of general fund. We just separate it in the general ledger so that you've got expenses right. and revenues. Actually, can you, I'm sorry, but I, we do have page numbers, Wendy, but it's, I'm wondering if we, but it's, no, not it's, 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 it's the not, next, you have to look at the You time. have to go all the way, it's another time. document, it starts at page one again. Yeah. So just keep going through this one. Look at the top where it says highway fund. Yeah. Okay, I'm with you now. Yeah, that looks like you got the balance sheet. Yeah, it's a pretty short okay. one because really um, the due to do from, which is a positive, it's an asset to the highway fund, is is really its share of what's in that general fund due to bank account. That's right, that due to do from. That 995000 part of that is due to highway. And why is it due to highway? Because you folks, when you develop your tax rate and your plan for the year, you split your your, your uh, municipal tax into general and then a highway. Okay, and I'll show you this in a second, right? So, um, <laughs> these little brown mini books are all over the place. So, it, it shows you that the highway fund has money due to it, about 581000 Um uh, You had an unreserved fund balance from last year that was a little bit negative, but it still ends up being positive, so it's fine. But again, remember, highway, it sort of operates like a assign these twins to your general fund. Right. Now let's look at highway, your debate budget, uh, revenue versus actual. Um, you can see the budget number of property taxes at $757,761. That was a journal entry I made to make sure that that was allocated correctly according to what you had planned. So that is recognizing that you budgeted revenue of that amount of money out of property taxes. Yes. If you look back on your town report, you'll see that's what it is. So here you have all your revenues. We're, we're uh, probably got a few revenues outstanding still because uh, for highway, we're at about 86% of revenue. So there might be something else expected to come in, maybe under grants or something like that. But, um, but the expenses are about 22%, which is about mine. The first quarter, 25% would be normal. So that looks fine there. And again, you can look at all the detail on your expenses for highway through September 30, that is there. Then there's another page after that, after the year-to-date budget versus actual, which is a due to do from ledger. This shows you your operation of your pool cash, which says, you know, out of that $3 million, what's due where? And you can clearly see those numbers here. The important thing is that this report should always have a zero at the bottom because What's due from general fund is due those other funds, and they should match, right? Okay. In the back, I've added combining balance sheets for different, different fund types. Again, you can take a look at this. 
The first page of that is general government. So we have some different types of general government, which is kind of a highway fund, a swim program, and a whole bunch of other things. And you can, you can see that there. I also involved with the special revenue funds um, and the grant funds. And then on the last page, which is really tiny print, it's kind of faded, is the capital projects fund. So you can take a look at that in the YouTube. But I think that's a breeze through on uh, quarter one. Yeah. Which I'm and the question is, it's very, the report says, I don't want to say, well, Sandra used to give us. Yeah. Right? Well, they can run out of that number. Yeah. So. There's no mess around. This, this isn't data converted to Excel that then could be transmuted and then sent to you. This comes right off the system. Thank you. That's why the prints are time. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> what's next? Okay, what's next is we need to, I didn't realize, um, that we needed to make a decision tonight on the Blue Cross Blue Shield plan. Um, and you, guys, you could wait, but I think it would be smart to do it. Um, so I asked to have this added to the agenda as an action item at the beginning of the meeting. We are currently paying this four month. Four, no, this per month. Oh, yeah, that, four thousand nine hundred and twenty nine dollars a month for employees. And 4929? 4929. Well that's that's also what the town is paying plus what they're paying. So that's the so it's everything. That is the bill. That's the total amount. The employee pays 10, the town pays 90. Okay. And it's going up to 5501, which is like an eleven point six point seven hundred dollars. Um, Five hundred so right. Because the employee still pays their premium out of this amount of money. Um, the open enrollment, of, I guess it starts technically January, 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 no, no, November 1st. November 1st for open enrollment, and then it closes, the new rates go into effect in January 1st. Right. And the reason why it's important to deal with this soon um, is that we want to get that open enrollment process started so that if any of your employees want to change their enrollment, going from family to two person or something like that, right. you want to get this done as quickly as possible. They can do that anyway, though. So. With a change, with a lifetime change, but a lot of people decide with open enrollment. I mean, it's just a process, and really, we should be offering that to the employees as soon as the decision is made on the plan. And how so, do we notify the employees of this change and this increase? I believe that if I haven't read this in detail, I, gotta, I haven't read it in detail yet either. But I believe that they also give you uh, information that you can give to your employees about right. the change in the plan and the pricing and that kind of thing. Yes, yes. there would be a communication process, which is why it's probably pretty important to approve this. If you're confident that you want to stay with the current plan, and, we, and the current plan we have is the gold, um, the gold, CDH, CDH, it's called the Vermont Select Gold. Yeah. And this is the same one we've had for, for a while. So I would, I know it's an increase, but I would, I would recommend that the board approve staying with the current plan, which is this gold CDHP. Is that a motion? Yes. <laughs> Second. <laughs> Any other questions, comments? I actually want to make a comment. I, um, <clears throat> I think that given how hard it is to find people, one of the things for our various um, open positions, one of the things that we are able to say with confidence is that our our benefits are excellent, and this is one this of, is great. One this of is the reasons. Example. We've had people say, really, you have 90-10 health insurance, and we can say, yes, we have 90 Most towns don't offer, most towns don't offer this high of a um, rate that the town pays versus the employee pays. A lot of them are 15, 20, 25. Mm -hmm. So this is one way that we can really Say, you know, please push our phones. Yeah. All right, so any other comments? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Um, and I think it's just important to underscore when we only require employees to make a 10% contribution to their health care, that means they keep more money in their pocket. So, folks out there, there are some towns that have been interested in the struggle with our highway department and where our employees are compens compensation involves. And we've heard simple numbers that, you know, town X pays 10 cents more or 50 cents more than, than us or what comparable and how do we expect to recruit if we're neck and neck. We, as a general rule, provide a greater benefit package. It's not only with healthcare, 
And that's a lot of dollars. They're between 10 and 20 percent, which many towns, if not most, are paying, requiring their employees to pay. That's a fee. It's thousands of dollars that they keep um, in their pockets. Uh, we also pay a, a greater increment um, to, their re to their retirement plan. Um, there's a recommended amount. And in fact, we had to get the state retirement program to make an adjustment to their programming in order to allow for our to compensate or pay more of that for that toward that plan. So the employee match is lessened as a result. So just so you folks know. Plus we pay, um, wait, I'm sorry, you're done? Yeah. Plus we yeah. pay for dental, we pay for life insurance. Um, so just to put it out there, we have a really excellent benefits package and that's been attractive to employees and hopefully, you know, recognize that yeah, it comes out of the comes out of taxpayer dollars, but I think it's well worth the amount of money that it, it costs because I think employees are valuable. And if we want good employees, we need to give them value. So we so we got one last point, one last point. Yeah, we, we, we bargained with their, our, their, our last road crew, um, I'll say the last one, because we've had a lot of turnover, a lot of change, um, sought to have a union come in and with an eye toward improving their, their wage and benefits, I guess. And the, the road crew at the time, it's a different road crew, um, was arguing to be, for us to, implement what our neighboring towns are implementing in terms of wage and they said we don't we don't care about just give us what they have for health care just give us the higher wage and we were kept saying at the end of the day you're going to have less money in your pocket and there was some of this going on when it literally came down to we had reached agreement on a contract when it came down to the union um, representative walking through the contract moments you know, before they signed it and implemented it, we had already approved it on our end. They said, "Well, wait a minute. We're going to have less in our paycheck than we st than we would have had we stayed." And he's like, "Yeah, I kept telling you that. You said you didn't want to talk about benefits." So they walked away from the contract, um, and as a result, there is no union contract. So we're we we're still at the status quo. The benefits have been, ma been maintained at the previous the level previous to the discussions with the union. So that's important. Uh, okay, can, so we've, we've uh, taken action on the employee benefit items. Can we, are the other two items, um, the approving and signing, approving Wendy, authorizing Wendy to be right. basically our agent with Blue Cross, and the 941, can we, those are health, are they, so those are just items that we just need to, they're they health under consent. Right, so, so I'm looking, I believe I'm looking for a motion so on both of those items. So okay, second. and a second, got it, thank you. Any questions before we authorize Wendy to serve as our agent and working with Blue Cross to get everybody set up? Yes, Wendy? Um, I think the letter is constructed to ask the select board uh, to authorize uh, Duties to sign the letter for Blue Cross to authorize me to. That's fine. To That's that. fine. We'll just we'll vote whatever whatever it is. We're we're making that um, motion. motion, and then we're approving and signing the IRS 941 right. would be and motions are made. One other thing to add to that motion, I'm sure we did this back in May. I mean, I can almost remember it, but none of us can find a copy, so we all need to sign again. Um, because Sullivan and Powers, I was wondering about that. Sullivan and Powers also switched employees, so we have a new person. Justin is gone. This new person, I forgot the name, doesn't matter. So I would ask that the board, we just yes, re sign this. Sign that. Okay. So this is the Sullivan, Sullivan and That's Powers. Not, that doesn't need a motion. No, it's an engagement. No, it does. It's an engagement letter, and we just need to. I know we did this. So, so I want to make a motion to offer that you approve and then we're all going to sign and sell it to the power to give it to the Second? Okay. All right. All, two all in favor on, on the two motions for three things. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, thank you. Um, I want to move. We have some scheduling to do um, around our deliberations for Town Highway 7. 
and later, but can we also, I'm just going to look at the board and say, including Denise, can we, uh, I want to bump scheduling our budget planning to later in the meeting so we can make yeah, a, a, little, a little bit of an okay. attempt to get back yeah. on track. Okay, so then on the consent agenda, um, I want to just call out for folks that we have, this is for all of you, we have added to the agenda a link to our minutes on our website. Again, all of our minutes are on the town's website. I, I, I'm sorry, I have to ask a question here. I could not find minutes for a couple of meetings on the town website. So I ended up having a select board 2022 meetings. So Marilyn, I can't respond when I don't, I don't, I'm not even going to be able to look and see what's missing now. But I can, I can tell you that to the extent that I, I'm unaware of minutes that are not out there. It doesn't mean that there isn't um, something missing by, this is a manual process. It's manual. Somebody has to get the minutes from Lisa, and then we have to, we get, we have to get them to a person who is authorized to get them on the website. So that's a very manual process. Things can happen. I'm not saying, if, if you're aware of specific minutes that are miss, missing, please, Email me and email Jamie, who is our webmaster. Between the two of us, we'll figure it out. Could you hear? Email the missing dates. If you think there are dates missing, then email, okay. email, email them to me and email them to Jamie, and we'll figure out what's missing. But in any case, the point is we've added and we will, we will continue to keep this link on our agendas so that you can go directly to the town's website and find minutes. They are on the select board's page. Um, I do want to say to the board that I don't think we've had a chance to review the October 17th and the October 10th meeting minutes, and those need to come off the consent agenda. Yeah, and, and what we're missing, because um, I checked the website, Marilyn, um, we are missing the minutes from the emergency meeting on the 26th. I think it's the 26th. And then the meeting we had last week on Thursday, which was a special meeting. So both of those are going getting approved tonight, and we'll go out on the, again, the manual process. We approve right. of as final, and then it's a whole other manual process for us to reach out to Jamie so they can be posted. Manual process means somebody has to touch it. In this case, three people have to touch things. It doesn't always happen at a perfect little tiny timeline because we are volunteers and we, all of us, including Jamie, and we get to them when we can. So um, what's left on the other item I want to point out that's on the consent agenda is approving, based on our discussion at our last meeting, uh, recruiting for a level one constable. So with that added, or that's not added, it's here, but just said out loud. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda as which 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 dates did you say we're not going to be? Included? We're not doing the seven October seventeenth special okay. meeting, and we're not doing October ten special meeting. We are doing October twenty special meeting and September twenty sixth emergency meeting. Okay. I move the consent agenda. Draft minutes should be there. The draft it's just there. yeah the draft minutes should be there. Um, okay. Is there a Second. Second. Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Um, okay. Rick, you're on the road report, and we're running about we're running about ten minutes behind. So I want to. We're going to give Rick. Uh, well, no, you don't need to make it fast because some of what folks are here to hear about, I believe, relates to the road. So. We're going to do a full half hour, a full 20 minutes that we budgeted, budgeted that we allocated for the road report. We're going to do a full half hour as we've promised on the public comment, but probably, but half hour on public comment, 20 minutes for road report. We had allocated a half hour on. Curtis Pond update, and I'm going to look at Denise and John and ask if that's going to be shorter. No, sure. Yeah, sure. Okay. okay, so that'll be about 20 minutes, maybe? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we'll make up some time on that item. Rich, go for it. Okay, I'll be thorough, but I'll be bulleted, so you can tell it, so we can cover ground here. Uh, we've had a busy several months. It's needless to what? Be quiet. I will. Rick, do you have the updated version? Yep. Okay. 
Yeah, that, I, I've been busy a few months, folks, as you know. So we we started with the loss of uh, our road commissioner, Brian Foreman, and we had a for one week we had a department of our uh, a director of public works in that time. We started we started that transition to the, to the director of public works basically with a, a few broken down dump trucks, a broken down front end loader, and you know, and then the greater as well. So the DPW working with the road crew have gotten all of that sorted out of the one part of the truck that is currently being we have to put a hydraulic pump on and so we'll be ready we'll be ready for winter. We're fully staffed right now. I mean the, the road crew is working really well to cover our lack of a kind of a road foreman. They've been stood right up. I've been working directly with them. Eric is also the, the ex director of public works is also really a volunteer and is helping with that as well. He's the co-commissioner, so, right? He is. We are both commissioners. So, <coughs> yeah, uh, yeah, and we are, uh, yeah, we're, we're trudging forward, getting ready for winter. We're prioritizing all the operational needs we've got in town, getting as much grading as we can done, get done now. That's starting to phase off because we disturb those gravel surfaces and they need to compact before we get a lot of water on them or we'll have a real mess. So they're starting to transition back to fixing more pothole areas and not general grade. So we probably are a little behind on that, but we're doing the best we can. The, um, let's see, staffing, we're actually looking very good. We've got our, really we're up to full staff in terms of our road crew. We've got our four members. That's Tyler, John. Yeah, we've got uh, Tyler, John, and, um, Dana is on part time, and we've got uh, uh, Peter and let's see who am I missing? Ogden. 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 Yeah, Ogden's our new hire, full time hire. He's he's, a young, he's younger person, but he's you know, the other crew, crew crew members will work develop him out nicely. He's got experience with equipment, and so I think we'll be in really good shape. So, uh, so Rick. Yeah. There were a number of items that were not. Or unattended to that you notice yeah. you notice here that should have been they should have been tended to but they weren't and now they're going to be is that yeah correct? we were out there were a number of things that should have been dealt with that weren't when we started with the DPW the DPW was only here for about a week and he got a lot of that one week's time reorganized and started in place and so and the road crew, really, like I said, they've stood up and they they've been, ordering, they've they've been, been amazing. Yeah, I mean, I they've they're worth everything we ever put into them, and they're they're an impressive bunch. You know, I, I love working with them on this. Now, John, you John's here. You've been there. Send that word back to them. Uh, you should be proud of them. So, yeah, the, they're working currently on next year's salt order for what, uh, and that's of particular interest, in the, as, as we know now, because of the rail potential strikes if all that assault comes from the west by rail, if that stops, salt stops, we got a full shed right now for what we use. We don't use, I mean, where we use salt tends to be on our, the county road, it's on pavement. You really don't put a lot, of, a lot if any, salt on a gravel road or you'll have flood season all winter. So it's it's primarily sand on our aprons that come off of the paved roads in a short section at the elementary school. That's you know, where we use it, but where we where we use it, we need it. So, but we're, they're working on the contract for that now. So let's see. let me catch up here. We just had an expensive one of our dump trucks. Just we lost a. I mean, we had to do an eighteen thousand dollar repair for an electronic part of a sensor for an exhaust. We've had a lot of expensive repairs recently on equipment. So, but that is just the cost of doing business. We have to you know, continue to keep them operational. And the guys right now you know, are really working on, on getting plow frames up, getting ready for the first snows. They had ordered one of the things that we didn't have, uh, we, we needed to replace the chains. Eric ordered them, they came in. I think they sent the wrong chain sets to us, so we have to return those and get them back. But that they're working on that actively right now, too. It's important business for us. Let's see, so uh, the grading that we've been doing, we, 
had gotten feedback from some public members as, as road commissioner, acting road commissioner, and we, uh, Bliss Road needed some work, and they got up and graded that, and we had uh, uh, Foster Hill as well, and those are of primary interest because they're not the grade hills, you know, Foster Hill, probably Gray Road, and then there was also a Collar Hill culvert that was failing, it had a rotted invert in it, which is the bottom of the pipe for those of you who don't know what that is, and it actually developed a hole in the top of the pipe. The, the crew pulled that culvert out, switched it out, got it back in, and packed it, it's all spread out. So that's, that's great, that happened last week. They actually did a little roadside mowing up on, Mos on Moscow Woods this past week as well. And, um, and then there was a hazard tree removal on Bliss Pond Road. And let's see. Yeah, so that's, that's very good. When we talk about chloride, let's see. Bridges challenge here. We've got the Moscow Woods bridge failure over right by the, by the old mill there. And that abutment is, we've had the abutment failure on one of the main beams on that. Bridge is currently open. Only one side of the bridge is, is really un, not load bearing. We had the Wolf Engineering assess it and make a recommendation back in April. Actually, that was a thing uh, Alfred was supposed to do a uh, diversion of the water. It was probably a ditch failure along there that caused that failure on that abutment. And there was supposed to be sandbag, but it didn't happen. So I have DeWolf coming in. We're with, I'll be meeting with the crew down there. We're all going to meet with uh, Chris Temple from DeWolf Engineering, one of the best structural engineers in the state. And we'll try to divert water for the winter to stabilize that from getting worse. We just got a $90,000 grant from, uh, from the state, from their structures program, to do a temporary repair, though 90 probably won't cover it next summer. I'm guessing, I mean, Chris Temple's April estimate was 80 to 100,000 <coughs> engineering, which is probably another 10,000. In this commodities market and this materials market, God knows, you know, I mean, we could, may have to raise another 30,000 possibly, it's a guess on this part. But we'll have, that is a necessity, otherwise we're not closing that bridge if that abutment gets work. That's only a temporary repair, that's basically to put what they call a soil nail system in th back into the sub-base or horizontal pins, they're very long, about 30 feet with anchor. And then they would. And that's the temporary. This is a temporary fix. And that will be, you know, that would happen next summer. They would then basically create like a shot creek wall over that abutment. Those nails would hold that in place. And then we have to replace that bridge. That is a, you know, a culvert replacement, really basic with no aesthetic treatments. It's about 600,000 with another 30,000 of engineering. If we have to do a bridge, you're talking over a million. Um, and so I, we are going to be looking, right now our priority is to get a contract out for engineering immediately for the, for, for the temporary repair next year so that we can develop construction plans and bid those out this spring to have it ready for the construction season next summer so we can stabilize that thing. We're tr looking at, and so I'm considering if the board will let me do it at sole source, you know, it's probably an $8,000 design on that, and just not going through a bid process just for the design, because like, we would lose a month or two of precious time in getting those plans developed, and I would just assume go to the world engineering and have them do it. And, so, uh, Mary, how, did, so Rick, how did we find out that <clears throat> the work we thought was done, wasn't done by the former commission. Do you mean the sandbagging, well, just, the sandbagging and diverting the water? How did you find out that that well, was Well, it was in the done? report, and, and Chris Temple told me he had talked to Alfred and to Toby and about that it should be done as soon as possible. That was back in April on the release of the report. It's in the report. Right, but how did you find out? Through how Chris Temple. Out? I called Chris. Oh. And he, I asked him, I was getting up to speed on this particular project, and he told me that which he was a good fact. I'm trying to get a time for him to come out and make sure more damages are done after the rain we've had this summer. Fortunately, it's been fairly dry that we've had a few big events. 
as soon as I'm trying to arrange that this week so that the crew and I and Chris can kind of meet out there, lay a plan for stabilizing that ditch erosion and get the sandbagging and probably Jersey barrier to back that up so that plow wash doesn't do damage to the temporary sandbagging and then you know, get that in, so we're not make, protecting the abutment from deteriorating further. So that's the plan. That's how I, that's through the end of the year. So we'll we'll get that. That's a top priority for us. John knows it. That's all the road crew that we've got. So we'll do that quickly. I am going to put some kind of contingency if that bridge were to have to be closed, if it gets deteriorates this way, then we'll figure out a, a detour because that's all we can do really in there until and then. You know, at that point, it becomes more difficult that, if that abutment fails on us before we do temporary repairs. You know, we, we just have to go right to a full structure replacement. And that means getting the grant funding to help with that. So where that's another priority for this fall to begin the grant search for, the, for that money. So um, anyway, that's, that's kind of the nuts and bolts on that particular project. I have one quick question. Given for all of those who live where we live, where we're using lots of all the time, is there any scenario under which this the, the bridge will stay open this winter? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's, at this point, it probably will. It's if I'm putting this in as a contingency. Yeah. What we're going to do, and I've, I've talked to Peter, one of our crew members this morning. He's actually finding a lot of these materials and things that we need right now. We're looking at. Right, you know, we're looking at ways. There's only one, one of the beams is unsupported. It's only a piece of this abutment that is failed. Most of the bridge is fine. 14 feet of it is fine, and it's low there. So, you know, you just have a lot of speed. You got to jump. You got to jump. No, no, I'm sorry. No, and so what we're going to do is we can, right now there's cones on it on the unsupported part. We don't want vehicles on it. But we can't really, cones aren't effective when we come plowing plow wash, we'll just take those right out. So at minimum, we're gonna probably have to put big fluorescent barrels that are loaded with either like a, a liquid chloride, I mean, a, some kind of liquid, liquid, liquid antifreeze or sand. Or, and Peter suggested this, and it's a really great idea. They make, you've seen Jersey Barrier with big concrete. Well, they're too heavy to throw on there. We'd lose them. But, they make large plastic barriers that we can fill with a liquid that would be light enough. And that will really ensure that nobody gets over there or, and protect that, even from a lot of cloud wash. So we're, we're looking at that as well. So I just, I say that with a detour, it's a contingency we want to have in place. And we'll, I have a, I have a site on the website where we kind of do a road report. We usually use it in flood season. And but I'm going to be updating that probably daily. And uh, you know, certainly every other day on the website as we get into snow season. Anytime there's a particular problem, you know, I'll note it there so you can, sh and I, I try to, I kind of communicate directly with, I was doing it with Alfred before, I'll be working right with the road crew. The things you need to know, it'll always be in there. Okay, and I'll probably put that you know contingency detour plan down at the bottom. It will stay there as a as a, you know as a, uh, a permanent piece until it's no longer needed. So let's see, what do we have for next? Day? We've got we just received all the radar speed signs, which we ordered. So we are going if I can right now we're up to our ears and some winter prep, but I've already talked to Peter and to John and to a few that, you know, we, if we have the concrete basis for the more permanent, and I'm gonna to try to get a few, at least one or two of those in on Lightning Road, or Lightning Ridge Road, and then on County Road above Maple Corner. And then hopefully, you know, on the eastbound side, of, so out of West County Road coming into Maple Corner from the other end. But I just have to get out with them to position them the plan, this is my plan, long range, if these traffic speed signs also record vehicle speed and it records the time that they're passing. So, it, you know, we'll probably download, and I can download that right to a cell phone 
And so we'll know how fast vehicles are going, and we'll know when they're going. It, it, so, and we'll, we'll be starting to monitor the speed on these roads. And now we're going to have um, uh, several, we also have two portable signs, very portable signs that we're going to be able to move around easily. Even these permanent signs, we've got, they are removable from their concrete base. I bought them with special adapters so that once every four months or something, if the road crew, when they have time, they can actually relocate them to another concrete plug, which will, so we can move, use these, these radar signs are very frequently moved around the town, you know, with frequency. And the, and the residual effect, I used to use, use these a lot when I did land transportation plan for Edison. And we, the residual effect of this can go months or more. People get in the habit of slowing down, and some people just permanently stay that way. But we, so we can cycle these to different places. And we'll add plugs as we see necessary. I got some extra plugs. Some will get installed this fall with any luck if we get there before the ground freezes. We have to get the plows all set up and some very important things before I do it, but we're going to really try to do that. Once I have the plugs in the ground, it's really easy to drop the sign in, set it, and go. And then uh, they're going to be pretty useful for us too in construction zones because there are also a variety of messaging packages. It's not just speed, so we can. The guys, if they're doing culverts or if they're doing some bridge work somewhere, they need, they can actually use these for traffic safety a little bit. They're great. For, they get people's attention. Now, let's see. We're also, uh, I'm kind of working, I was talking to Peter about this today, and we're going to, the bridge got my attention here. What we're going to do come May, after the snow, that's always a time to really review infrastructure on roads because all of the there's no grass everything's been pressed right to the ground not snow load so we're going to do a we'll do an inventory of all the bridges we're going to look at all the ditching i'm guessing i've got to look carefully at this yet at the moscow Woods road uh, bridge it's possible that it's probable that kind of was preventable if we if had we had good drainage it didn't get into that abutment and so we're going to make sure that that is. Uh, I think we'll set that up as a standing, up, standing, you know, a standard operating procedure where every May we go and we take a scan of all the bridges that we've got to make sure that our drainage is good, and that we don't have any small problems that can turn into very big problems like this. So, and we're also going to take a look at all of the culverts, and there are a lot more culverts and bridges in this town, as John will tell you. But I think we've. You know, there, there was an old inventory done here, and I'm not sure when it was done. In Addison County, I used to actually pay for these for all 30 municipalities. We did them every five years. We did a full town-wide inventory. And the road foreman, every year, as they did replace, as they replaced culverts, they would update that. It was a digital inventory that VTrans kept. I helped actually write that original database. I was on that team. So that we knew that then every five years we true it. We come back and we get, we'd actually hire a, a consultant to come in and inspect hey, all hey, of Rick. it. Yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt your train of thought. Well, I want to make sure uh, there was one hand. I want to have a chance. We've got about two minutes left. Um, oh, and I'd love to have a chance for people to ask questions if they just to if Rick needs to just repeat something or clarify it. Um, and if there is, if anyone has a question like that, then as I said earlier in the meeting, please come forward and join us at the table so we can hear you clearly and Lisa can capture your name clearly. And if not, on we're road. not on roads, not seeing anything. Okay, Rick, go finish, finish up. Yeah, this is perfect timing because I'm right about, uh, you know, the, I, the point is on this where it's the beginning of kind of a more strategic. So we don't, like this bridge failure, it's a very expensive mistake if it was expensive. I mean, if that bridge were to last another 40 years, you know, that's a lot of money we wouldn't have spent. And there are many cases it's around the state. It's not just Collins that makes this, it's not the state of Vermont, too. So we'll have some discipline about how we look at these in the future. And, then, and uh, I think, well, that's only the beginning of that. There's some other things on our roadway surfaces and everything, our ditching. 
which you know, we'll continue. Upford was doing that, and the crew was doing that with, with uh, building up sub base and, and, and getting certain drainage in certain places that were very soupy. You know, so that's all. You know, we'll continue to look at these places and try to improve that to reduce cost and then to kind of increase the level of performance. So Rick, I thought I saw a hand up over, yeah, right. over here. Questions on the roads? Do you want to I, I asked, I asked a minute ago, I didn't see any hands. Oh, I thought I saw a hand up over here. I had my hand oh. up, but Rick answered it. Okay, great. Oh, there's, there's, where's Rick's timer? Is there, and, well, said Susan hand keeps going up to run the camera. Oh, that maybe that's what I That's <laughs> you see the corner of my eye, you can just stand yeah. well. So, Rick, thank you. Um, yeah. So, Bottom line, there's a lot going on. Um, the, I, I want to just underscore a point Rick made at the very beginning of, of his report. The road crew is now fully, fully staffed with four, with four people with a recent hire, and a part time and a part time person. And they are doing an amazing job. Okay, so, so we're going to go into our half hour of public comment. I'm going to repeat some things I said earlier for folks who work here. We, the select board works, some of you know this, but we realize not everybody knows this. We know it very, very um, thoroughly. We work under rules and procedure that we adopted in April of this year. It's now, it's, it's on the website, it's on the select board's landing page where the minutes are. You can find them there. I didn't bring copies tonight because I wanted to mention it tonight. <coughs> in the future, we're going to have you know a few paper copies here, so that if folks come in and they want to address the board, and I mean, what I'm asking is that you become familiar with how we work. I have a copy if anybody wants it. I have a copy too. Please familiarize yourselves with how we work and how we invite public comments, so that the way that we're organizing ourselves and conduct our meeting doesn't feel like a surprise to you. It's, um, it's our, this is what we worked, we worked really hard on this actually. It was a fair amount of negotiation just among the board to um, put this in place. And so it, it helps us a lot and it, it will reduce surprises as you come to speak to us. Um, we have half an hour. I am going to ask again, as I have before, for a show of hands. So not so that I can cut you off, but so that I can have a sense of how many people want to speak and we can do our very best to make it fair. So that you can trust that if you're not the first one, the first person isn't going to use up the whole half hour and leave nothing for you to say what's on your mind. And I feel like that's our job as a board to kind of keep things moving and make you aware of how much time you've used so that you, have, so that you can make your point quickly and let other folks have a turn to speak as well. Also, I want to point out that while we have only a half hour tonight, on November 14th, we have we will devote largely the entire, as much of the meeting as we can, it'll be more than half an hour, to allow for expanded public comment. Um, what else did I want to say about this? Um, and I guess the, I'm going to ask, why don't I ask you to show your hands now, and then John's going to help me with timekeeping, and I think Denise has some broad comments she wants to make. We're not take, we're not eating up your time as we do this housekeeping. Um, and then I am going to invite you to come forward to speak to us from from you know the seat at the table with us. So why don't we? So Marilyn, I see your hands. Jan, uh, Barbara, Dexter. Dexter, Dexter, do you live in Calus now? No. Okay. Um, Mary Alice, how many? One, two, three, one. one Can you leave your hands up if you're a Calus resident and you want to speak? One, two, three, four. Four. Mary Alice. Mary Alice. Yeah. Mary Alice. Okay. So we have four people. Four. Okay. Um, well, that's a lot of time divided by 30 minutes. <laughs> right. So why don't we assume you're not all that we that you don't need five minutes? Is five minutes, and then if five that's a minutes, lot of time. if five minutes is up and people other people want to come in, or if you feel like you weren't finished, you can come back and, and make some more comments. I don't I don't want to cut you short on the half hour. We promised you. Um, Denise, you have yeah, comments I, you want to make? Yeah. I mean. 
listening to comments at previous meetings, um, I want to get a takeaway and an understanding of what the themes are. And from what I heard, it is explained about executive sessions. Um, Rick did a fine job giving you an update on roads that were all staff or staff for the winter. We have four and a half people. Some of the equipment was left in disrepair. It is now being fixed. Um, and then the status of our hiring process for the treasurer and business manager and the DPW. Did I miss any significant themes? Or is that pretty much accurate? No. No, Jane's got one other item. Okay, can you tell me what it is? Oh, I, I was going to do that. Do yeah, you can do it. You've got, okay. you got two things that are not on your agenda that I want to bring up. But, but I know what one of them is. What Denise is talking about is kind of the broad theme of concern. Okay, so um, if, if we could add to the hiring of open positions, a constable and animal control officer. Yeah, that's on. We actually approved we recruiting just a constable tonight. On our consent agenda, we approved the re recruiting for a level of one constable. Yep. So it's there. Yep. Um, and if all these people have been talking to me to <laughs> well, I might. All, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, okay, so we have uh, Mary. I'm missing somebody. Marilyn. There's Marilyn, there's Mary, Mary Alice, Marilyn, Jan, 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 and Barbara. And Barbara, okay. Yeah. Um, Marilyn, why don't you join us? Uh, I just have a couple of things I want, Marilyn, to, say. I want say, to say. Say your name for the oh, Marilyn Bush, no relation. Um, no relation? <laughs> she says that every time she introduces herself. It's hysterical. Um, no relation to. So I, I just have a couple of things. One is, uh, the first one is, I assume that during this public comments time, the select board will not respond. It will not answer. take up anybody's time no, not, by responding to what they said. Not unless asked, then it won't count. Okay, so no comments from the keynote gallery here unless asked. Okay, you, put, you, you agree? Well, no, 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 we have half an hour for the whole thing. So, we're not, so, so that's... Yeah, but, 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 but that half an hour belongs to us. But if, not you're asking, if people are asking us questions, it would be hard for us to respond. Um, I do. I do have uh, one question, and that is, uh, when you say the bulk of the meeting on the twenty on the fourteenth of, of uh, November will be used for public comment and conversation, what does bulk mean? How many minutes are we going to get out there? I don't. I don't know for sure yet. We it will be more than a half an hour, and how much more depends on what other items of business we have to conduct within. What is generally we try to keep to a two-hour meeting. Yeah, it's going to probably depend on what we hear tonight, too, Marilyn. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't think I don't think half an hour is long enough. And I and I made the suggestion that we have an entire meeting devoted to public comment. Okay, you there call are it a special meeting if you like. Whatever you like, we do have other is fine. Right, but we, do we have need a meeting where people are not hampered by okay. comment. So, so we would like to hear. Denise outlined the broad themes. We'd like to hear what you need to hear from us. I'm sorry. I, 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 think I depend on reading the lips, so it's really hard I'm for me. I'm sorry. To I, 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 understand, I understand, but yes. Yeah. We're, we're, depending, we're depending on you folks to tell us what it is you would like to know from us. So if you can and that, we're it, going to do it November 14th. No, right? tonight, no. tonight we want to know. Oh, you. wait a minute. So you have plenty of time to confer amongst yourselves. and. And no, get some, all of, the, some of it might be to gather information, Marilyn, from I'm minutes. Done. Thank you. Okay. So we have a suggestion yeah, before us that we devote most of the meeting or all of the meeting to public comment. We'll take that under advisement. I think you're right. It depends on what we hear. Yeah, I mean, we, we <laughs> might decide we need two hours. We might decide we need three hours. Okay. So who's who's next? Yeah. Well, I'm going to go next, <laughs> I think. Mm -hmm. oh. Maybe she should have kicked the dog. <laughs> no, she, she kicked the lady. Yeah, she I did. She the dog. Okay. I'm Jan Olson. 
And uh, first off, I want to thank you for allowing the public comment. I know sometimes that um, it may feel like you're being bombarded with negativism, um, but I think all of us are here out of concern uh, for a lot of the issues. And so tonight, I am not available on November 14th. So I'm gonna take my liberty at this meeting to make public comment that I cannot make on November 14th. And I'm on a, I do have written comments. I'm gonna ask that it uh, be reflected to the recording secretary and be put in with the minutes, please. Okay. okay. Um, I want to address specifically two items that are not on the agenda and then some general comments. The first item I want to bring up is about reappraisal right. for the town. Now, I thought that was going to be on the agenda tonight, and it is not. And I see on the agenda tonight, it's been moved to November 28th, and I find this totally unacceptable. We have a ready-to-sign agreement with NEMRIC, New England Municipal Resource Center, for the completion of a reappraisal of all property in the town of Callis. Now, I forwarded this to, to Mark, who was my liaison, and I don't know if you've all seen it or not seen it, but anyway, we realize that it is important, even though that this reappraisal is not gonna start until 2024, you are signing an agreement for an advancement thing. We have to sign it to get in the queue. Um, Ed Claude Felter sent me this email uh, just a couple days ago. I have Callis penciled in for a 2026 completion. I can understand that it can be difficult for a town to contract for something that is three years out. It's also difficult for me to know what costs will be that far out. Quite honestly, I doubt if any other company would even bid on Callis. That is what's happening now. Rival companies are booked so far out, they don't even bid on under 1,000 parcel projects. And we are around 980 parcels. For what it's worth, I currently have bids on six projects for 2026. Only I went out to bid, only one went out to bid, and it's going to be a crazy next few years. He happened to tell me in another conversation that he's booked for 10 towns in 2025. So in order to get your reappraisal for this town, and we're gonna need it sooner than later because I mark my words, I felt I, our, our sales equalization is probably gonna go below 0.85, you're gonna to want to get in the queue sooner rather than later. And so I really hope that this can get signed soon. Um, what's important about this is once that's signed, there is a document that has to go to the PVR, Property Valuation and Reporting Division of Tax, Vermont Tax Department. Each year, the town, we get as a town about $8.50 per parcel every year that is segmented to go to the reappraisal. And it goes into a special fund. And that fund currently at the end of June of 2021 had 86,000 bucks in it. By the time the reappraisal starts, there'll probably be a, close, a little over 100,000, which will go to that. Now, there's gonna to have to be extra budgeting because if you're gonna have listers working with the company and doing the things that are expected of them as outlined in that agreement, they're gonna have extra work to do. We are gonna have extra mail costs and extra printing costs. So there's gonna to have to be an increase in the Lister's budget. Um, the other factor I wanna mention in that is that uh, this Lister is not going to re-up for an election. I don't know if you're going to find another lister, um, but you may want to look into the fact that there is the possibility of hiring a professional assessor to work with the two remaining listers, or you may have to find an, uh, an assessor who will be hired uh, with a contract to do the full work. It's whatever you all choose to do, but you're going to have to look into that for sure. And I cannot speak for Wilson or John, who are my lister partners what they're going to do. All I know is... Okay. 
That takes care of reappraisal. I don't know if you have any questions for me on it. Oh, I do want to say one thing since I'm a liaison on this, and this shouldn't count on her time, in fact. But it's on your time. It's on my time. I think <clears throat> between now and the 14th, I'm going to work with whomever I need to work with to try to see if we can get this contract into shape where we feel comfortable approving it in as a probably, possibly the consent agenda item, yeah, that's or okay. as a quick agenda item. I have to admit, I think we're going to have to talk if it's okay with everybody with our town attorney. The reason is other towns have managed to do this, so we need to be able to do it. It's hard for us to enter into a contract without knowing the amount. Oh, that was my question. Yeah, we don't the know the amount. You, you are that? guessing at the moment. It's, it, it, I thought he says it somewhere there. It's about a hundred to one hundred and fifty dollars per parcel. Yeah, he does say that. Which, which we could maybe do a not to exceed. But, say but how do we know? I don't know. I mean, you just said how many parcels. It's nine. It's hundred. It would be nine hundred. You're going to have nine hundred fifty to a thousand parcels. Who knows? We're not going to increase by a whole lot because we certainly aren't creating new parcels. Right. Uh, new parcels I mean, unless there's that, a lot of subdivision. I'm sorry that I don't fully. Understand mm -hmm. all this, but that's why we have listeners to explain. And I'll, I'll, I will work with Jan and the town attorney and try to get this into shape. And we also I recommend it to you. Well, okay. we all, I also want to say that we have a purchasing policy of Scott or yeah, Hunter, yeah. that we adopted that anything over five thousand dollars to go out for an RFP. But if there's nobody really else available, but not only that, it's not actually it's our money, but it's segregated and only for one purpose. Right? Yeah, but that well, so we so I mean, you have a, in on that. You yeah. have the purchase. You have the purchasing policy. Yeah, right. Um, so I would. So I'm actually. I, I don't unless you can capture. Well, we'll have to decide. We we do not have to have that. But the policies are not. that we adopt are binding on us. And it is. It's, it is it's about a, us keeping yes, the ship so, of the town on but, a straight path. But, but we can. Yeah, we're going to make look at that because we can wait stuff. We can't get out of here under the under the policy. Right. Yes. I don't know how you want to deal with the fact that she used up. No, this is town business. This is town business. This is this is business. business. So. so, Jan, did you have? A, I think you have a uh, Pardon me. I think you have a finish. Yeah, keep going. Keep going. Okay. My second item that's not on the agenda is relative to the select board public hearing for land use and development amendments. Um, I'm going to ask you to put a permanent placeholder on your calendar that you will know that there is to be a select board public hearing. Um, to hear about the zoning changes. At this point uh, in time, the, public, the Planning Commission expects to have the second version of changes made as a result of our public hearing uh, in late November at the earliest or early December at the latest. The Select Board has to hold their public hearing within 120 days from the date that the, public, the uh, PC submits these changes to you. So, in this regard, I want to state my observation that I've been less than pleased with the um, response when I send out my emails um, about this topic. Uh, and in my view, I feel that the lack of response on these emails are somewhat disrespectful. In those emails, I have asked whether the select board wanted a special presentation of what the changes were all about to the regulations, what transpired in the public and the planning commission's public hearing, and answer any questions select board members might have. Only one of the select board members have responded that they would like a special presentation to the select board by the by the planning commission. I was going to say I thought they responded. You were the only respondent. I guess that if the Planning Commission can assume that the Select Board will simply approve whatever the public, uh, the Planning Commission has uh, written and approve these amendments carte blanche, I wouldn't worry. But knowing you guys, it ain't going to happen. So the, sta right. the statute specifically states this, and this is what I want to be critical of that you know. 
the statute specifically states that if the legislative body proposes any changes to these amendments, they must be made not less than 14 days prior to the final legislative public hearing. Is that the select board's hearing? Yeah. yeah. Legislative body yeah. is the select board. Yes. Yeah. 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 So what my experience of what's happened in the past is the select board made changes at their public hearing and did never gave a chance back to the public to the planning commission. And I do not want that to happen this time. I want that if you're going to make changes, you let us know, and it's got to be within the 14 days before your public hearing. Well, at minimum, 14 days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not less than. Yes. <laughs> right. Okay. Is that fair? So that so, the, so you're going to have your. I, I, I mean, I definitely have seen your emails, Dan, and I respond. I apologize if I haven't responded. It, it's very, it's a, it, what I remember is a feeling of the timing is very complicated, and you're still in flux on when you're going to have your, the planning commission will have its final hearing. We're going to, we've had our hearing. So we so only need one you, hearing. But what is the... When will it get to us? You said, yeah, you said, I, I, I which said. is going to be either in the late November or early December. That's when you're going to get our, our the, the final draft From of the changes. And you're Congress. negotiating with the Conservation Commission or something? We are. Yeah, that's, that's what I understand. Yeah, so then, we can't, and we have to hold our hearing within three months. Within 120 days, days from the date that you four, give them to us. Four mm -hmm. months, that's four months. So, yeah, so we'll probably... No, we're not. We, we made a decision a long time ago in the planning commission. We, we scrapped. I, yes, I really wanted to have the vote, have it voted on because it goes to the public for votes. Right, right, right. Um, and I really wanted it in the March time frame. We're not going to make it. So then the decision has to be made. Are you going to hold a special Australian ballot during the middle of the year, or are you going to wait until next November uh, when there's the next election? And I have to look at the process and the protocol and the procedures to see once you've had your meeting and have approved it, what's the time lag before the vote has to occur. So, but yeah. we have four months from when we get it from you. Yes. That's the bottom line. Yes. So, so four months is not nothing for us to then just immediately. But you're going to be in budget. budget. I was going to say we're going to be like You are going to have all of this stuff budget and you're going to have more. town meeting, you're going to have preparation and I know what that's been like. Yeah. I've experienced working here with this, yeah. and it, you're, you're <laughs> under the gun. And so that's why I really want it um, on your calendar so that you're aware of it. I know you're aware of it. When I don't see it, I think it's gone down the tubes. Well, I would have no. thought we did have it, and I don't know if it fell off after we... I thought we did have it on here. I thought we had it on here, too. It's not... It's, it's not future. We'll put it under You're not trials. telling me something we never... But we have zero awareness at, at sure. all. So, are you advocating... I just want to get clear. What you're saying is, number one, you want it on the It's a future item. Number two, I think you'd prefer, wouldn't you that we schedule a time here, a presentation about the plan and what the changes are, which I think would be great. Yes. Well, and I, right. that's what I want, but you, want, you probably don't want to do that until you've until you know. done work, until, until you're yeah. negotiating with this conservation uh, You know, there, we're enough along. It, there's not, there are some changes. That they're not major, major, major. Um, so it, Larry, it's, it's, how well are we on our negotiations? Uh, well, I don't know. Let, me, let me say this out loud, though. That you're, you're right, we're heading into budget, but we go to we go to press, if you will, on town meeting material by the middle of January. Mm -hmm. So if we don't, if we get something from you the first week of of December, mm -hmm. we are we have until mm, forty five days. We have one hundred twenty days. One hundred twenty. We have so it'll be into the beginning of March. Right, so there's still time after everything goes to press because that's when we can say, okay, now we have. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. I just want, so, but I want clarity that we'll right, put, it, we'll put it back on other future okay. agenda yeah. items. Yeah. Um, and we'll rely on you to give us an update when you think you're going to get to us. And it's in Jan. Is it's town plan and zoning? No, it is not. It's, it's just not zone. town plan. Okay. It is it's only zone. land use development. We have done the town plan. Yeah, I just want to be clear. Okay. Yeah. But since you mentioned the town plan, 
I'm going to bring this out because it's your future as well as the town's future. 2024 is the time that the town plan has to be redone. I really encourage you to put in a request for a, for a grant to have somebody sorry, come in. Sorry, Jan, Jan. Sure. No, I just, I just kind of had things done because we, we do still want to try to keep ourselves to half an hour. So that's what I'm paying okay. attention to. Okay. So, if you want me to quit, I will, but I have general concerns that are listed here, and it's going to go in the record. And whether you, or not you want me to read these now or not, I, it's, it's, I realize it's time, and I don't want to take anybody else's time. Yeah, I know you have to do it. Yeah, leave, them, leave them for the record, and that's fine. They're going to be in the record whether mm -hmm. you read them. Well, we could have Jan back after the should I ask you to sign them if you want to process. read them? Right now. That's right. Right. <laughs> Jan, um, would what? you be willing to come back at November 28th? 14th. And no, she no, no, can't be on the 14th. 14th. Oh, on the 28th, 28th to continue this conversation? Yes. As official but town by that time, some things will change because yeah. obviously my concerns would substantiate a little bit what Wendy said. Um, it was relative to the treasurer. It's relative to why, why some of us feel very disappointed with the performance of the select board. And I think it's important. To, to understand that. I mean, I know that you all work hard. I know that there's that, and it, I know that you maybe feel harassed, but I think there's much room for improvement, and I don't know what it is that can bring the improvement out in communication. But I work in that town office when I'm in the Lister Cube, and I hear the phones ring, and I hear what goes on. The town office is the public face for what you guys do or do not do. And that phone rings off the hook on certain days. Um, so the, the communication, I think, is, is vital. I think it's been missing. I think I mentioned Sharon to you one time. You need a public relations person, I think, for something. Okay. Like a business administrator. Well, well but I also believe it should not be the treasurer who's your business administrator. Mm -hmm. After he listened to what Wendy said, I think that treasurer position needs to be strictly a treasurer. And, and and I, you know, I, I have been here. And, and I spoke with the ladies outside, and we, we can continue this conversation. And I also yeah. really think it's important, this whole grant thing, I'm going to mention grants, and then, I, I'll, then I'll shut up and I'll give this to Lisa. But grants are extremely important. It's not just road grants. What you have in that job description is only roads. We have CLG grants, and we have a $325,000 CDBG grant, which is the ECCT is a sub-recipient. Now, it's important for me as treasurer of ECCT to know that somebody's going to be there to know where this stuff is going to go when it goes to... to it's actually not our intent that we get those grants. So, no, the, the DPW grant piece is to do... Right. Yeah, well, I, I understood that, but I, whatever you do, you need a grants administrator because we just got dinged, from, uh, admonished by somebody in the state that we didn't have a very good grant administration protocol. Right. And so that's it needs to be done. That's, that's why we need a position that that's one of the main functions of what they do. Okay. I mean, I don't care exactly who do, does it, but there should be a and grant administrator you, or a bookkeeper or a payroll. Are you going to do that? That was in the July 25th minutes. I don't see any resolve of that. Who's going to be road commissioner, an animal control officer, the constable, which is already. And if you need an administrative assistant, then get one. Um, and if you're going to, you know, whatever. So. I will now leave. If I may, I'd like to ask that I go next, and I will give 90% of my time back to you because I'm going to be three minutes. <laughs> well, Mary Alice, Mary Alice, please go first. Okay, I've got three quick things. Okay, thank you. Barbara Butler. Can I just say right here? Why don't you join the table, please? <laughs> Two feet. Okay, Barbara Butler. I wanted to comment on a couple of things that you guys have already discussed. Um, first, in response to John's concern about, excuse me, I'm sorry, <laughs> John's concern about how much time a treasurer is needed, and you indicated half time maybe is what you guys had d decided from research. Um, one thing that I know we, is in the job description is that. There are a few times when you talk about the, the treasurer will do such and such 
either in coordination with or in conjunction with the bookkeeper. We don't have a bookkeeper. So that's one thing that there's a misfit with the job description and the time that you guys feel like we need a treasurer. Okay, secondly, I agree that the town does provide really good benefits, benefits package. It's really good. Um, but I also want to be sure that our guests know that not everybody gets benefits. I've worked for the town for many years and I don't get any benefits. Um, Jan doesn't get benefits. The listers don't. The zoning administrator doesn't get benefits. So it is generous, but only for a few people. For full-time employees. Um, and then I also want to respectfully request that the select board put on a soon agenda the process for um, your approval of minutes. And the reason I'm asking is because there have been a, several times over this past year that either Jeremy or I have sent you guys corrections or more often additions to be put into your minutes of things that happened at a select board meeting that were omitted in the minutes. And then the next thing we know, the minutes have been approved and our corrections or our additions were overlooked and not included. So I think it would be fair for you guys to give us an explanation as to the process for approving minutes and when anybody, not just the five of you, because I know the five of you coordinate corrections and edits, which is necessary, but if anybody else submits additions or things that were omitted or corrections, how do you address those and why are they not put into the approved one minutes? Thing that you mentioned for a minutes. Pardon me? There was one thing that I saw uh -huh. that you mentioned for an addition to the minutes and I thought we did it. Nope, it's not in the approved minutes. So just, I just wanted to request that maybe on an upcoming select board agenda you explain to us the process for approving minutes because all we see from the website is draft minutes and then approved minutes. And we don't know, and then it's too late because you guys approved the minutes without any... Well, we can go back and we can revise our information. Yeah, the other thing I just want to speak to, and other folks who are liaison with us, Yes, we receive emails and we don't we're not always responsive. We can I can show you my inbox. We are inundated. This technology has turned the select board into a wholly different animal than it was 25 years ago. Right? So so you know, we don't get the phone calls. We get it. And so it's sometimes hard we drop balls. And we're probably gonna continue despite our best efforts. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. We do we get I think that what she's saying is not just that we tell her what our process is, but that we find a way to integrate their comments. Well, yes. Yeah. Well, well, yeah, I mean, I think we're the one time we did that, and I thought we did it. I remember, okay. No, I remember twice. Yeah, okay. Um, I, I, well, I actually would like to, Mary Alice, if Mary Alice can forward, I would like to just go ahead and explain the process. It's not that hard. Lisa takes our minutes when she's present and able to do so. If the meeting is recorded and she's able to pick it up from the recording, then she captures minutes from the recording. Um, the minutes are, I'm actually, as part of the research that Denise and I have been doing, I've been looking at minutes for other towns. I find most towns have one page of minutes. For, and I'm like, oh, that's a short meeting. No, it's a two-hour meeting one page and our minutes are comprehensive to the point of if any little detail gets left out that somebody thinks should have been there um, it feels like a miss whereas it's actually seven pages captured very thoroughly um, two hours of discussion and you know we go back and forth about whether that's really the way to go or should we just distill it down to the motions and the, the, motions and the, and the decisions. But the process is manual. Lisa completes them. They land in an email that comes to me, to Denise, um, to, Jeremy to, and and to Jeremy and Barbara, so that they, because, because they asked for more time to communication, and so rather than coming to select board meetings, they wanted us to just give them information. So we said, well, why don't you get the minutes? That'll be like hot off the press what went on at the select board. <coughs> and then they go into a folder where all of our stuff goes, but that's manual. It has to come out of your email and get put in a meeting folder. Somebody has to do that. And with the dozens and dozens of emails we get, certainly things 
Carl J. Crouch. And that's what we as a board, that's one of the things we are trying to do, is manage all of the comings and goings for our meetings and keep track of everything. Right, when the minutes come in, we then we send them to Jamie to put on the website. And she's, don't forget, she's a volunteer. She's a volunteer. So and she then, has a very busy life and schedule. So then we go through and read the minutes, and we all, you know, try to note whether they're generally accurate, or do they say the things that, do they re reflect the things that needed to be said that will feel important? Certainly, do they capture the motions and the approvals that we did, the things that we authorized? And then, as you know, they come on the consent agenda with those edits, if there were any, to be approved. But it's all a very manual process that we generally are the ones doing. Anyway, Mary Alice. So I hope that that, that addresses the question rather than having another, because I could, we could have the conversation again, but I would say all the same thing. It doesn't, I mean, it doesn't solve the problem. It doesn't solve the problem. No, I get that. I get but that is, that is the process. And, and, the, and the, you know, I'm sorry you feel like it's excuses. We're being clear and, and descriptive about what we're trying to juggle with on our side. How would you do it better, Marilyn? Okay. How would you? Do it? Is it okay if I? Yeah, let's, let's say. Okay. If you yeah. want to follow mm -hmm. rules, right? That's right. what you handed us. So yeah. calling her out during a meeting is yeah. not following. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Okay. Thanks. I'm Mary Alice Prophet. Hi to everybody. I'm really honored to be here. Um, Barbara is someone who I'm so happy to be sitting next to you right now, and I'm so happy that with all that you've been through in the last year, I just wondered if we could give her a round of applause for all of you. <laughs> Being in the hospital in Boston and going through all that you've been through and then also like coming right back into the town of Cowles and being here for everybody is huge. And I know that everybody feels the way I do, that I'm just thrilled that you're here right now. And I also just wanted to take the time to um, introduce my son, Tennessee. Tennessee, can you raise your hand? Who some of you know, he was at the fall concert with his friends playing with um, others recently for fall foliage. He's taking a Democratic Roots class at U32. I don't know if anybody else here took that when they attended U32 or at U32. And I had a great time at Parents' Night speaking with his teacher and just learning about um, how much emphasis there is in the district, teaching our high schoolers the democratic process, and taking a lot of pride in um, being in Vermont, raising children in Vermont, and the fact that we still have a sense of conversation here. Um, I was actually flying through DC on the way back from a trip recently, and um, one of the men who worked, an African-American man who works for American Airlines, he stopped me and he said, where are you flying to? And I said, Vermont. And he goes, oh, I've always wanted to visit Vermont. You still have town meeting, don't you? And he said, that's such a strange concept to all of us who live in D.C. because we're so polarized, we don't know how to talk to each other anymore. And so I gave him my phone number and email, and I said, come and visit me. I live in Calais. So you're welcome to come. And we had a really good connection. So um, I wasn't planning to speak tonight, but coming in and listening to the meeting, I just wanted to share a couple reflections from spending time with some of the folks in the room. Um, in recent days, I've had some really great conversations um, with people who have been sort of you know, seeing different sides of the issues that are going on in town lately around the roads and, you know, Alfie and his 25 years of service uh, to the community and also the Sledmore members and, you know, a lot of the burden of trying to do this voluntary job and having it be more than a full-time job. And I've been just noticing, I think, from my perspective, that it feels like this small town is just full of a lot of people who care about each other so much and give so much to each other on a day-to-day -day basis. But we're actually experiencing the same issues that as a nation and as a world globally, we're experiencing. Um, so we see it on the news. We see like people talking about polarization and the inability to listen and be in conflict with each other. 
Um, and we think of that as a foreign concept, you know, like, oh, isn't that too bad that there's a war going on in the Ukraine or whatever. And the truth is, it's like it can even creep into our own lives, obviously. And I've felt that before. I feel that on a regular basis because I'm a very passionate person. And so I'm, I'm just the first person to admit that, you know, communication <coughs> is super hard. Being involved in things is super hard. But I think that if you're in the room right now, what that's a sign of is that you're someone who is, in a way, outside the norm. Because you're taking the step to participate, and because you're doing that, it shows that you care about your community. And so regardless of whether or not you're on the same side of the issue, we're the same kind of people. Does that make sense? And people that have given up on the process and said, like, I'm not going to participate because all politics is a waste of time or volunteering is a waste of time, those people, um, you know, you know, for better or worse, they don't think that there's a way to get through conflict anymore, you know. So I just want to point out that people in this room have a lot in common. And without going on too long, you know, I just finished a really interesting course with a woman that many of you know. She lives right over the hill in Worcester, and her name's um, Polly Young Eisendrath. And some of you may know her from the community. She's a very famous author and a Jungian uh, psychoanalyst, and she's also a Buddhist. She's been involved with Shoshan. And Polly was saying how important it is right now. She just finished negotiating between the dean and assistant dean at the Rubenstein School, helping them negotiate how to have a conversation with each other. <coughs> they did this over the restructuring of UVM's budget that they've been given, and they did it in front of their staff. So it was a room full of people. And what Polly's essentially been doing is helping people with, which is with dialogue training, learning how to actually have a conversation where you're speaking from the first person, where you're listening actively, and where you're remaining curious about someone's perspective. She volunteered to come, no charge, and do some of this training here with people in town of Palace. And it's a great offer. Um, she made that offer yesterday at the Trout Family Lodge to many people traveling from around the country to do this uh, training. And I think, <clears throat> considering that she lives so close, it's a great offer for our group to know she about. Lives she lives right over the hill in Worcester. And I just want to throw that out as an example of you know one idea. And I think people in this room have a lot of great ideas about how we can communicate better as a community. And I would say the first thing to do is that we stop blaming each other. Because blaming the select board or the select board blaming the people who speak in the meeting doesn't actually increase our ability to communicate together. But at the same time, that requires personal responsibility for not answering emails when someone asks you to respond to their presentation and you're the liaison for this issue. Instead of laughing it off or joking or acting like, Oh, I had a lot going on, saying, you know what? That was my responsibility. I dropped the ball. I'm sorry. And that's the adult thing to do. And I think what we want to do is we want to model having adult conversations for our next generation coming along. People like my son, Tennessee, and the others in the community who are watching us and say, how do we resolve this issue in conversation, even if it takes a long time in a respectful way? The last thing I want to say is that I don't know the truth of anything that's going on in the community because I only have my perspective, okay? But I do know the truth that as a uh, former employer who had, you know, 30 employees when I owned my restaurant in Montpelier, Down Home Kitchen, when an employee stays with you, especially someone who stayed with you for 25 years, it doesn't matter if you like them or not. The dignified thing to do is to honor that person publicly and to perceive and expect conflict and to figure out a way to do that so that you're taking care of your employees. And I think what we want to think about in Callus is do our ethics that we're stating in terms of politics match up with the realities of how we're treating our employees? Because we can't ascribe to high ideals as a community if we don't actually care deeply about the nuts and bolts of how our employees are paid, how they're treated, 
the time we give them to communicate with them, and essentially being good employers, good bosses, right? And that's the responsibility of the whole community, and we need the select board to communicate out to us what do we need to do as a community to be good employers, to take good care of our people. And that might require you guys considering asking for help. You don't have to do everything yourselves. You don't have to have the burden of being everything to everybody, but you do have to let people know when there's an issue and a problem that you can't resolve that you need help with. You have to let us know. So I really appreciate your time. I appreciate being here with everybody. And um, you know, I'm really grateful to live here. It's a beautiful place, and I, um, I'm very grateful to be raising my kids here. So thank you. Thank you very much. Does anybody feel most? I was here for public comment. Yes, are you here for Town Palace business? Yes, I'd say so. Okay. I, I can keep my presentation to 30 seconds. Okay. That would make Johnson it easier. Timer. Johnson timer. <laughs> yeah. My next little favor, I live in Middlesex. Uh, but I'm running for Washington County Senate, and the district includes the town of Callis. So I'm here in the process of going to all 23 towns in the district, which also includes Braintree, Orange, and Stowe outside of Washington County. That's it. I'm a civil engineer. I got a small farm over the hill in Middlesex. Uh, Mary Alice identified me as Chrissy's dad. I'm also Nate's dad, and also Hans and Lucy's dad. That's, right. That's how I call him. <laughs> That's the purpose of my being here. I appreciate it. I'm not even sure if I took the 30 seconds. Do you do yoga? I do yoga. I do not do enough yoga. I'll be honest. Is it hot yoga? No. No. Dr. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Dexter. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let everybody see your face. Thanks for announcing your spirit. All right. I appreciate you. Thank you for your service. I appreciate the hot seat. Thank you. Super fun. Anybody else want to? Anybody feel moved to add anything to what's been already said? Okay, great. Thank you Madam very Chair, much. Yes. Just one thought, which will take less than 30 seconds. Because of never concern, concern for the people who are coming to talk about Curtis Bond. Mm -hmm. I think it's great that we're going to have a meeting on the 14th to talk about this more. I think we should talk about it more. And I urge you to come again. And so we can talk about it in a relaxed way and to help us think about ways that we can do what we do better. Yeah, that's and the more right. concrete, the better. Um, it's our responsibility to change ourselves, so we'd sure like that. Thank you. That's all. Yeah, I would love to hear from anybody that has suggestions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah. Okay, so. So we are Curtis Pond now? Yes. We so are I, I, uh, I am getting up because I have a camp on Curtis Pond. So whenever Curtis Pond comes up and I'm on the board of the Curtis Pond Association, I confuse myself. Yes, you do. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I think one thing I want to add is that
can do, I don't, uh, well, John, no, uh, no, the flag for presenting your, presenting your update. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. So I have this. Okay. And, yeah. and this is a list of the things that um, we put for the rest of the folks. Uh, Mark Sweeney, part of the Kurtz Pond Association Executive Board, and we asked, we put together a list of points that we'd like to bring to the uh, select board. Just give them an update on where we are. So, um, and I don't know how many more copies you have, whether some people want to <coughs> maybe look on with Jamie if somebody wants to look at it. So the first thing we want to do is give us, do you want me to stand or sit? Whatever you want to do. Yeah, you here. Yeah. That's it. Um, the first thing we wanted to go through was just kind of give a quick update of the, what's going on with the Dubois and King contract. And I did bring copies of the, hand, oh, there was a presentation done on September 27th by Jeff Tucker from Dubois and King. And um, he provided a presentation. I brought a few copies, not a lot. <laughs> um, but uh, there are a number of permits that um, Du Bois and King are working on shepherding through the various groups, and they're listed here. Um, there's also, um, they're working on the engineering drawings, the bid plan. 70% uh, is, is at draft, and they expect 100% in November 22. So far, no concerns have been identified by Jeff. So we're on track to, to get that, um, that contract, the stuff done in the contract. He'll also be providing an updated construction estimate so we can be really a lot more confident in what we think the construction is going to cost. One of the things that we wanted to talk with the select board was we had added a couple of ideas after the contract was written that we wanted to follow up on. And the Curtis Pond Association Executive Board made two motions. And one was concerning beaver mitigation. And we have voted, the Curtis Pond Association voted to table until the dam was completed. We got information that we shouldn't look into the, for various reasons that doing beaver mitigation <coughs> should be done after the dam is done. We also, this Curtis Pond Association Executive Board, at this research, um, somewhat we, we looked at hydropower, and what we found was it's almost impossible to get it approved, and it costs a lot of money, and we wouldn't be getting enough power to make a difference. And we do have detailed research on, on some of that, so if anybody's really interested, but we pretty much voted these in and I didn't know if you guys needed as part of the contract whether you need to just say you're okay with that so right. Jeff Tucker yeah. doesn't have to make sense to me. No. Doesn't have to make so you know we can tell provide Jeff provide the option, you know, in the future. We discussed that at the meeting. Okay. I okay. yeah. didn't know whether you need to do anything official. I don't, not, so. I don't think there's an additional cost or it's not sizable. Okay. Opinion. Um and one of the things I would like to know and is for you guys to let us know what you think completed looks like. So I know if you want a presentation from Boys and King, you just want to completed in, the, completed in the sense of the drawings. Well, just the whole contract. Yes, yeah. the drawings. Um, and if uh, you have an idea of what that is, you can send me. So we can just mod let Jeff know that this is what we expect from him when he's when he's completed. That. So. Well, I'm wondering. Completed would be. The permits have all been received. Um, the financing is all set. What else, John? Um, In terms of the engineering? Yeah. Well, I think Jeff's done this like 100 times. Right. We, yeah. we, we're learning from him. Okay. Um, I, I, I just know from afar that Dubois and King folks here who know Nichols Pond, I, I know Doug does, he's probably going to those woods. Um, that, that dam was a real high hazard, high risk dam, and actually that we, we impound a lot of mud, that was all, added a lot of water, um, and that would have blown out Mackville and the trailer park in Hardwick, and that was
was a major undertaking, and Du Bois and King did the design, and Hubert Construction did the, the, the bill of the new dam. But uh, I think if they can do that, they can do this as a much simpler project than that one. Well, if you and that provided hydro, they maintained a hydro capacity. <laughs> If there's anything that you guys want special, you know, just uh, we let, I want to just make sure Jeff's aware of it so he can. Do you know when the updated construction estimate is going to be completed? Um, he's going to be talking about the 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 draft to be done like in November, oh, okay. twenty two, and I'm thinking that at the end of December. This I got from Jeff. I could be more. Mm -hmm. We might, you know, it's up to the board, but we might want Jeff to come and talk to the full board. That would be my best get it so. Yeah. So the dollars and cents of that, I talked to Mark on the phone today. <laughs> Jeff estimated like around 600K now with all the inflationary costs since yeah. last time. We, yeah. And, and Mark was advising even going, having a, a cushion of another 100. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. Concrete's that. doubled and tripled in quite oh, a bit. Yeah. 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 We I'm rely not on Saudi, Saudi Arabia not only for our oil. But they're the number one manufacturer of concrete, wow. the, the product that goes into concrete. So just so you know, they, they really have us there. Yeah. Uh, I'm so just say one thing. I'm Mark Mahali. I'm on the board of the Curtis Bond Association. So completion for Jeff means, number one, as you know, we've already submitted a permit. On behalf of the application. The permit application. Uh, yeah. Permit application to DNR. And and I think that what's happening is now Jeff is completing the drawings. And when they are 100%, then A&R moves ahead to process, them, which will take months. But his contract is to produce 100% drawings and to answer questions. His contract is also to see if we need other permits like wetlands permits, et cetera. Do we need army core permit, et cetera? And I think it would be great when he has 100% drawings done, get him in here. Because after all, it's your contract, right? right? Our contract. Right. Right. So get him in here. Um, the hydro stuff, all that is just we explored. Should we add that to the contract and came out? Recommend to you that it be added. Like, do his drawings for power. Do his drawings for a beer right. apple. Right. And we just thought by the time we were done, no. Uh, we, we, it's just the power cost, it's not cost effective. So, so I, I question you said Jeff's role is to provide the drawings. My understanding is, and the conversation and the explanation and the, mm -hmm. the dialogue between AR, the dam safety program, right. um, It'll be on the, our collective behalf. On our behalf, right. that's yeah. correct. Well yeah. stated. And just a quick note on the uh, money side of things. As, as you said, it's between six and 700,000 is what we're looking at. Um, we had an in initial goal of raising 100,000 this summer, um, and we just this week hit 200,000 since April just when we started fundraising. And when you hit 700, just keep going. Right, exactly. No end in sight. Right. We're going to continue fundraising. So, the, We're not going to look back. Right. We're going to see so, how much we can get. Right. The goal is to get at least to 250, hopefully three, um, by town meeting day. Mm -hmm. And the hope is that we can have a dialogue to find out to move the process along to have a bond vote mm -hmm. at town meeting day in March to cover the remaining remaining expenses. Right, right. So if we are, you know, if we raise 300, it might be a bond of up to 400. Yeah, not to exceed. Not to exceed. Yeah, John, exactly. and I, John and I are working on that with the town attorney. Great. Yeah. Um, and, and if we can get that, then on town meeting day, then Theoretically, we could get this done next fall. That'd be amazing. That's what we are told, is that the time for building the dam is just at the end of the summer. Beautiful. Can I, can I ask a question? I don't want to... Mike, Mike, I, are you... I'm, is now right, a good time to ask the question? Sure, yeah. go ahead. Where, um, I'd rather... 
ask them when you have them. So if the, town, if the town votes to do a bond for, what, 300000 um, when four hundred and fifty okay. is kind of where where there. is the time where we we adjust the tax basis or the assessment um, because that would relate to the bond, right? It would be right. We're, the right. Far away we have to pay the tax. We're looking at probably not doing an assessment but doing a bond. And we wouldn't the tax wouldn't change until well, no, the bond is in the, independent of the right. assessment district. Right, but we wouldn't taxes, it wouldn't involve property taxes right. until we take out the bond and have to start paying, paying it back. Right. right, and so that's what I'm asking is, is, you know, if I'm going to vote for the bond, then I... What year is it going to hit your property taxes? Well, I want to know... How much? I want to know how much I'm going to pay and how much Mark's going to pay. It's a... Um, well, if we do it. My understand. My understanding way, is that. No matter what. My understand. My understanding, and maybe Jan, you can help here. Um, say we um, approve the bond in March. Right. Then what we need to do is enter into a construction contract. Right. And we need to let it bid uh, arts and up. Yeah. Right. Let's bid the construction contract and enter into it. And then there'll be a payment schedule, and before right. the construction contract is signed, you never want to sign a contract obligating to pay someone unless you have the money. So the bonds have to be issued. So the bonds would have to be issued, I think, if we were going to commence construction, let's say at the end of August. July. Yeah. We'd have to issue the bonds in the early summer. Right. And um, if we issued the bonds in the early summer, it's not going to end. There's a payment schedule, and it starts. What I don't know is when the payment schedule. So, so, so probably the year. I don't know. We, we did this with the firehouse in East Montpelier, and so station. the difference was we had exact numbers, and I know it's, it was a different enough environment, economically, in terms of the availability of materials and resources. And but we had a fixed number. In fact, the bond vote went down. It might have been twice. It went down once, and then the second time it passed. It did pass the second time. And it went down, and that was constructive. Um, and I will say our select board was reticent uh, with this Price. number, but I think maybe a mature, I don't know. We let it go. We said it's up to the public to decide, but we weren't happy with the cost. Right. And by that bond being defeated, they sharpened the pencil and made adjustments and did things that were not possible. Mm -hmm. And that they came down a side lot, how much they came down, half a million? Yeah. And so all of a sudden a firehouse bond went out again more. and it was overwhelmingly approved. So I think the public embraced that. They were willing to make adjustments. And you know, to this day that firehouse is, is, is adequate for what we need and better than that. So maybe that was an overshot. The dam is different. I mean, the dam is a dam. You're not building a restaurant and a cafe inside of it. It's not like the Hoover Dam where you go inside it. This is a little infrastructure project. It's like a bridge. So it's what you get is what you get, and the public's going to have to decide whether this is something in the broad public interest, callous public well, interest or not. And now that we've decided at the bond vote. And so you're going to have to do some and major so markets. So and, and what, you usually, what we usually do for town meeting is we, you know, put the budget together, what's the bottom line, what if this, 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 and this passes, this is what it will do to your tax rate. Right. So that's what we usually and, do. And there will be, let's say, John, following what you said, let's say there's a not to exceed, then there ought to be a statement which says, and your taxes will be X cents per hundred bucks. So I don't know that you can put that in the warning. Yeah. I don't know. We'll know it. Well, well, there's just stuff we still need to figure out with our right. attorney in terms of to our attitude. I don't, and I don't, I'm not sure. We had a fixed number. I'm just, just saying, my, in my, in its limited experience, I've been here a long time, but it's still a limited experience, one project in my, in my resume. Um, but we had a fixed cost, and then we, our percentage of that, because we share that firehouse with these right. earlier, 
Um, and so we had a, an actual target number and we knew to the penny what we were obligating the town to do. So well, this is a, a different. If we have a maximum, say it's a maximum of 400,000. Right, then, then you can figure it. Right. Well, it's less. you can figure it, and I don't know how they do But I don't know how you set a tax rate. You're not going to set the tax rate. You can't set the tax rate until you know what the bond interest is. Right. You don't know what the bond interest is right. until they're sold. Right. We don't, you don't set, we don't set the tax rate at yeah. town meeting anyways. Yeah, right. Town so, meeting is the budget yeah. and all the different yeah. items. And if, it pass, if all these things pass, and we put it in the report every year, so yeah. people can see, you know, if you pass this 400000 not to exceed amount for the dam, it's going to increase your taxes by a point, however many cents it is. So, so I want to go back to my original question, because what I'm hearing is that we've departed from the idea of assessment or whatever you want to call it that would have affected the Curtis Pond neighborhood um, in a way reflective of the value of the of the dam to that community versus the rest right. of the town. So we're so Marge, I think you were the one who had done some beautiful work laying out various models for that approach. Mm -hmm. But the bond approach, which which you know we're going to be bonds. bonds. But either yeah. but that's what I'm trying to get to the bond of is, is how does whether yeah, the bond is where the money comes from, and then the, and the or the, it could come from an assessment, but it's now we're talking about it coming from a bond. Either and that has to be paid back. There's any number of ways to pay it back. Right. So so I'm still wanting. I think Mark, I'm going to guess Jamie understands my question. Yes. Go ahead. <laughs> so early in the process, we had lengthy discussions about how to pay for the bond. And one of the options was all callous taxpayers pay equal <coughs> towards the bond based on their property value, say $17 per 100000 or whatever the math comes up to. And then another idea that we bounced around was having separate assessment districts. That's right. Right? So pond front owners pay you know, 40% and walking distance people pay whatever percent and everyone else pays whatever percent. It, through many, many conversations with many people, it has become apparent that that's really complicated. Right, even and the attorney said that. Even the attorney said, mm -hmm. if you want have any chance of getting this done next year and getting this on March Town Meeting Day, you can't do it that way. Okay, that's news to me. So I just want to say that out loud. Yep. That that the that that shift. I hear you. That and you guys are the ones with your sleeves rolled up and your pencils sharpened. But that is a that is a different message than we've had here at the board. That's right. The reason for it. So what we so decided. I, so um, yeah. we'll make, yeah, this no. is where we'll make sure the minutes capture it really yeah. clear. Yeah. What we decided. What we proposed, and we had, and we met with Denise and John about this, was that rather than have a tiered assessment, which is really complicated, we just raise a whole bunch of money locally and, and say, this is what we're That's doing. You know, right. This is our share, and okay. the rest can be split equally and right. keep it exactly. simple. Right. 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 And, they, and, they really, and, and that was our idea. Like like dedicated, committed effort to the fundraising yeah. to raise even more than what they were initially going to raise to offset. That's really, that is a, that is a, that is a really good counterpoint. Mm -hmm. And so thank you for, that yeah. is, that is the answer is right. that now, even though, so, but we need, we need to have that conversation out loud because there yes. are people on Lightning Ridge who, who might go <laughs> in other places right. in town who, <laughs> want to know, wait a minute, how is this getting paid for? But, right. but so the Curtis Pond community is raising half of the money privately exactly. to do it. Exactly. Okay. And the other part yeah. of that fundraising is the education, oh, Colleen Bloom with the Curtis Pond Association, uh, is the education about Marge's figures, saying it's going to cost everyone in town far more money if we lose the dam than if we fix it. Because the property, because the property taxes, the, the loss of approximately $100,000 per year, and it would go up $44 per year. And it, was, it, it costs a lot for all of us yeah. to lose the dam and fix the dam. That's, that is the property. The property values 
around exactly. of those residents around the pond right. and in that area will that's, right. that's also and very that complicated. Money. That's really complicated to explain. Right. The really simple message is the Curtis Pond community did a bunch of fundraising and yay, and that's covering half of the bill. So the rest of you know the rest of the community right. can feel like okay. And, and I one other cool. point. I don't think it hurts to say that property values around the pond will go down and therefore yeah, the tax base. Absolutely. But that's and an argument, right? A good argument, which every time I've tried to explain that I have two or three times. Yeah. But we can, I know we can, and we should make the argument. But I think that coming out of the box saying Curtis Pond community <coughs> raised all this money. Yeah, like absolutely. That's, yeah. That's, that's the big point. That's the yeah. big point. Dan has her hand up. Okay. I just want, Jamie, I wonder too if you have information like other people not in Curtis Pond have donated money. Yeah. And so it's it's a community wide project, and yeah. people on the Good east point. southeast side have donated yeah. to the same thing. It's right. Just, so it's a community wide thing. Absolutely. We have, and, and, well, yeah, but we have uh, over 250 direct donations from people from all around. Right, and so I think that's so, important. That's a lot and I think that's a, yeah. a very that's a big indication of the support for the project. Yeah, exactly. and we've been. I the, think it would be important to. Yeah. Keep track some of that information. Yeah, we, we, we are. Do. And we've been working on, we've been viewing all of our fundraising. We did the concert series. Um, we did the summer auction. We sent a fundraising letter to 2,500 households in Callis, Worcester, and East Montpelier. Um, and we've been viewing all of our fundraising as also sort of public awareness raising and drawing support for an upcoming bond vote. And we have sort of a rough outline of plans moving towards that. So once we have um, more set in stone details about a bond vote, um, we want to have public hearings around town, public meetings in different neighborhoods to answer questions. Um, we're, we're planning on sending a, a postcard or two to all callous voters in the lead up to town meeting day, asking support and just sort of <coughs> like, like living room meetings. Yeah, yeah. like Those so it's really, really like really a, really a public support campaign. Yeah, um, and we've yeah. seen enormous public. Support. Yeah, I was involved in something I can't even remember what it was years ago. We did the make the rounds, and it was yeah. really effective. Yeah. So, so if you can in your communication efforts, the more you were able to raise through private donations, the more likely that bond is going to yes. pass. Yes, and that's, right? that's what we've been right. saying. Not only because it, that shows community commitment, but it reduces the actual number. Exactly. Right. And right. if you get it down to 500 bucks, I don't know if we need to bond for 500 dollars. Yeah. Yeah. I, wish, I wish we could do that. So One of the things, nice. I just check in with you and ask yeah. if you've made the points that you wanted to make. Does yeah. the board have any other questions or comments? I do, do want to just point out that we have a list of here some of the items that we think we need to do for legal things. Uh, I'm not going to list those through, but just so you know yeah, we'll the types of the things we have. And I also, I wanted to just stress upon the way the dam looks right now. Uh, I have a link to a picture. I saw that. And I don't know if we can pull it up at all, but on the left top side of the dam, it's uh, leaning forward by a lot. And people are really getting concerned that we don't have the luxury of what This is the one that's in your, in your, on your, from your web page? Yeah. yeah. Well, that uh, was yes. one from a couple days ago. Oh, did that go yeah. on the front? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Was that was on the express major concern of a change. Right. And we were walking, Mark and I were walking by and said, come here, look, look right there. Look, yeah. you know, it's overhang and there's uh, stones that have come all out and the other side is Relatively so there, there, there's a rumor dramatically that, different. There's a rumor going around town that that's a, a function of all the rock and roll music that was playing up in, <laughs> over the summer up there in the fundraiser. Uh, 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 so you're going to have to make some, some, <laughs> some classic yeah. music in the town. The rocks are rolling. Don was real concerned. I mean, he looks at it every day for Yeah, no, it's, so it is really And I do want to comment that we have been pursuing grants which are not 
But it, it, what we're finding with federal grants, it takes four years. I don't think we have four years on the day. It's really hard to get grants. It's really hard. Yeah. So just we're not. It's not that we're not doing it. It's just it's not that. Yeah, and you know, I just think that this is a resource for the whole town. It's not just. Well, I mean, you hear all over. You hear from people from all over about when they were kids, they took swimming lessons, and so it's. Yeah. It's a community. It's a community. Thank you. Nice job. Thank you. Well done. Well done. Yeah. So I do have extra copies of the presentation from Jeff. Thanks for being part. Thanks to you and the folks. Just one. Folks, we can't support her. Are a little still on the left because we are different breaks. We So they wrote a new one for us for the treasurer business manager position. I'm and I asked them to do DPW. You have a DPW. I think that's on your list right. to do. So yeah. another one for that would be awesome. Um, and then, yeah, and so we post the posting, and then there's always has a link to the job description or tell them where, where they can right. find it. So, anyway, so, so Barbara, what's your question? Yeah. Barbara Butler. So I'd like to just repeat a suggestion that I've made over these months, which is rather than spending the money on places like The World and Hardwick Gazette, it seems like we should be posting in like Vermont Business Magazine and the more professional journals. And I know yeah. I've said this several Vermont times, Business but I'd just like to repeat it again for the I record. I Vermont Business Magazine, I have checked out, and they don't do this anymore. They don't do it anymore. They don't do classified ads? I don't think I'm, so. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised to hear that. I believe you. But no, again, you know, it just seems like the Hardwick Gazette in the world is not well, the population. Well, we got an applicant from seven days. Right. right. That, that's, 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 I want to check that it's gone so that they had to I'm wondering why right. they're right. They're right. But I'm just thinking of professional publications. If you know, okay. other, if you know something else. Indeed. Indeed.com is really yeah. good. Well, hang on, though. Hang on. I actually was going to throw out, I was going to say something. In case somebody has Indeed on, on their mind, I um, thought about using the, the Indeed for my law practice. And it's it's a, you'll get a lot, but you have to you have to be on top of it. So you get flooded. You have to set up, right, you have to set up an account which you pay right. for. And then every resume spins <coughs> all the right words and hits your inbox. You, you have to screen them and you have to pay for them with an extra period of time if you haven't screened them. And then you've got all these people wanting, you know, to interview because they can see it's a match. So for my personal business, I decided I'm one person. I cannot keep up with that. And so I'm going to say by extension, the select board 
we wouldn't be able to keep up with the flood of, of Indeed and manage it. It's not, yeah, they do a yeah, great I job. Didn't, I didn't know it was that number so much. They, 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 they do a great service. job with their advertising. So everybody says, oh, you should use Indeed. Well, I, yeah, no. And I used something when we were doing, looking for the store operator for East Cal's Community Trust. I used something like that. You said you used Craigslist. That's what it was, wasn't it? it? Maybe it was, but there was something I used and I had given them my personal debit card number <laughs> to get it going. And then and then they found out, and then they kept billing me every month, and it took me like two months <coughs> to get them to stop. Yeah, no, those debit cards. Right? I mean, you have to have a full-time HR person to just bring those. Jamie, you had a hand up. I was just going to say, we're using Indeed right now for the store manager position, <laughs> and I concur with the experience. Yeah, it's, oh, it's, wow. I got to the point where they wanted my credit card number mm -hmm. and I read the fine print of what was going to happen next and I decided to say yeah. no. I, I think we have gotten some applicants from it, but it's been a lot of work. Here. Yeah, it's a lot. And of then, work. like I said, this other place, I couldn't get them to stop. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So, all right. So, but this, um, what I, what Doug, Doug has heard me say this before. And when Doug tells me all of the things we ought to be doing, I say, that, what did I say? I'll come over and we'll sit down and I'll help you make a proposal. So helping us do our jobs, take it beyond the great idea and say, okay, I have a great idea for the board. What can I do? Oh, I can do this and this, like Jamie did. I can do that thing. Um, and so I'm going to offer to help them by doing this thing. Um, that is enormously appreciated. Really yeah. very appreciated. I mean, there's, I mean, that offer that you and your mom made, yes. first time we've ever gotten an offer like that. The first time. That is it's mostly time. just <laughs> all the ideas yeah. of what we have to do. So what else on this note? OK, um, we got back some references on um, some applicants. Okay, so, so we, need to process that. we need to process that. Okay. Um, we do have, said, uh, we're going to be doing a round of interviews. Another round of interviews. We have um, Jeremy Weiss, treasurer. treasurer, business manager, and we've asked Jeremy, the town clerk, to join us for interviews. Um, and he generously agreed. Yeah. 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 And yeah, I think, I mean, I think that's good. If we get more applicants, yeah. I'll be sending them. To the board. Um, yeah. So there is activity, despite the fact that you heard that it is the worst time to try to hire people. Even while you heard Wendy said, yeah. Yeah. And our slow internet, as Wendy said, doesn't help us. No, it's, I, it's, I it's been a real conversation in our interviews. Yes, I'd like to respond to that. So Sandra was doing a lot of remote work. She was. It was hard. She was constantly right. getting because she was doing out of at odd hours. To make it to, that's right, because right. she'd get kicked out of the, the server and she'd be calling us, Did you guys are you guys out on the server? We were all kicked out. It was, it was really hard. So yeah. I had to go to the she used say. to right and she used to do stuff on the weekends, on the nights nice and weekends. Nights and weekends because there was less activity. Mm -hmm. So we gotta keep that in mind. So, well, and, so, yeah. well, we hope to have fiber optic with the clerk's office being one of the first buildings. Well they said by the end of January. They said by the end of January. I don't think it's going to be lit by the end of January. That's the whole, that's the, the isn't that line. a process that takes the longest? It's like they're, they're laying to No, I, so I specifically they, asked David Healy. Okay, guys, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm going to be, I'm going to yeah. use my gavel again. Um, because I want to make sure we calendar before we all turn into okay. tickets. Right. Yeah, because I've been here since 5 o'clock. Yeah, so we have, um, we have to calendar our deliberations. This is board deliberations on Town Highway 7. Uh, town Highway 7. It's we, private. We close the public hearing. Bye, 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 Thank you, guys. Bye, David. See you, David. Thanks, David. We close the public hearing on Town Highway 7, and we have 60 days to schedule a hearing. So what I would suggest is it would be great if you guys could give me and we could agree on what we possibly and what I send to our attorney. I think we could do it. Yes. I would prefer to do it at the same time. Now, we don't have one more meeting. Yeah. And you want to do it? I'm going to do it here. I'm going to do it here.
Uh, so I'm just wondering, should I just throw out some yeah. things? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Bye, Doug. Thanks for Bye, Doug. Thanks, Doug. Don't forget to read that. Can I tell you one thing? I don't think, I think I've talked to me all the time and going across the phone this time. I don't think that's going to flow. Because taxpayers have not going to want to pay for Maple Corner. Well, they need to get out its Australian ballot. Oh, they got to do something. They need to, they they need to show up if that's their opinion. They, but personally, if they, personally, I don't want to pay for that pond, that dam. I don't want to. And I don't want to have you guys go skinny dipping up here and save my visions. <laughs> Bye, Doug. Bye, Doug. Thank, Thank you. you. you Don't read that. Okay. So my first question is, is there a day of the week? Or should it be an alternative Monday? Uh, Sunday morning early. We're, we're going to get tied up with doing but, a lot of Mondays because of the budget. Well, yeah, or we right. do a Saturday. Well, we haven't figured that out yet. Oh. Right. But Okay. So what about, about what next? Yeah. Okay. Maybe so I'm going to throw out a date. Um, what about the 15th? Tuesday, November 15th. Yes. At what time? I can't do Tuesdays. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. And I got to say, Wednesdays for me are pretty. Thursday the 17th? Thursday the 17th, anytime after 7.30. A.M.? No. After 7.30. No, I'm not doing 7.30 a.m., right? Well, he said after 7.30. Thursday. 730. 7.30 a.m. Would you like to do a morning meeting? No. Okay. So, so then 7, at 7.30, I can P.m. on the 17th? Okay. 7.30 p.m. on the 17th. And this is going to be a Zoom? Yeah, yeah, but let's, I, I'd like to do that. Yeah. Well, we, we got to see if Joe's available. Yeah, that's right. right. I yeah. Wanna, yeah. Um, Wait, November, sorry, November 17th at 7.30. 730 p.m. Yes, and, but Lisa, when you're, if you're putting those in, make sure that these are board tentative. Deliber tentative board deliberations, which are private. Yeah. So, well, it's, so it's, it's actually the select yeah. board acting in a quasi judicial well, capacity. It's just so it's not a committee meeting right. where the public joins or participates. It's like a court. That's important to see. Okay, yeah, exactly. 11, okay what about 1122? That's what we're going to have two, two, you're going to schedule two? Oh, in case. Oh, back yeah. No, I can never do Tuesdays. Okay. What, and you can't do Wednesday. So what Monday about Thursday? Thursday. Oh, that's, that's Thanksgiving. Yeah. Oh, we're not meeting Wednesday. 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 Okay. Uh, from Tuesday on. Okay. I can do a Wednesday and it's not the third or the fourth Wednesday. Uh, the twenty third is No, I can't, I'm not gonna do that. That's the day before Thanksgiving. That's the day before Thanksgiving. I'm gonna do busy. that and someone could do the twenty second, right? I know yeah. I can't do Tuesdays. So okay, okay, now. What about a Friday? Fridays are good. Okay. Friday afternoons. We okay. Friday after Thanksgiving. Not the Friday after Thanksgiving. Not the Friday not after Thanksgiving. Okay. What about the 18th? What about the 18th? Yeah. Um, in the evening or or after how about five o'clock or something like no, that? No, I don't worry. How about Friday? Well, we were done. I'm, not done I'm sorry, guys. No, no, but where we've done Fridays and been successful is like one or two. Yeah. How about or later morning? I have an eleven o'clock meeting, but I could do how about it two o'clock. Two o'clock. I could do it Monday that. On Friday the eighteenth. Yeah. Friday the eighteenth. I can do that. I just okay. thought about me if I'm in Washington, I can still Zoom. We're gonna right. You can still Zoom, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, but it's not. Okay. okay. I'm gonna give these two times to him. Okay. okay. All right. Wait, hang on. I gotta get this right. Eleven eighteen, two p.m. or eleven seventeen at seven thirty p.m. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And now let's talk about budget. So okay, we, can I do one other thing? Yes, you may. Um, sort of, do you guys have any advice on how to approach this whole issue that Jan raised with this contract? Here's the problem. There's two problems. One is there's no amount. And I would think, you know, we have a thousand, what if you figure we have a thousand lots and you figure max 150 per lot, that would be 150,000 bucks. Yep. So we could just put in not to exceed. Yep. Okay. But then what if it does? 
Well, you won't. And then we'll deal with it then. I mean, this this with the market the way it is. Well, it would be it would be we'd have to put in something. It would be like a time and materials, but on a per lot basis to be negotiated, and not to exceed one hundred and fifty dollars per lot or something like that. I know we can write our way through that. Yeah. But the bigger issue that we just have to either suck it up or suck up or take the results is if we put this out to bid, we're screwed. Right. No, I don't think we should in this client. There I don't think that's even available. And it's, no, and it's not that you, I, on a different issue, I wonder you, you both have these sole source issues coming up. I looked at the con at the purchasing policy. There is some wiggle room. There is. And all I'm and all I'm asking that you do is note where the wiggle room is so that we are absolutely clear that we are still abiding by the policy. And here is right. here is a circumstance <coughs> under which the board in its own policy has reserved We did that. And that, that was, was right. And we did that on purpose in the policy in case there are issues that come up. And we also Used this company before, and yeah, we're not saying so it's not a new company. It's somebody we've That's already used. Experience. That's right, and it's because we don't want to say, oh, yeah, the purchasing policy is nice, but yeah, we're not going to ignore it because we don't want other people to do that. No, okay. Got no, it. no and, and it does leave us room for these circumstances. Okay, I will work on this, and I'll work through you, and I'll give you. I'm the liaison on this, and I will give you the contract wording, yeah. et cetera, and I will, and you'll put, and you'll give it to everybody. Okay. You can give it to everybody. I'll give, yeah, it, just to give it to everybody. Okay. And, put and it, you also can put it in a little in the memo folder. about why it's consistent. You right. can put it in the folder. There's a Google folder that already lives out there for November 14th. I'm pretty sure I need one. Yeah, there is one. I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you. You, show me how you just okay. slide your document. Is, how you okay. <laughs> is that the Google folder where it keeps telling that we have 99% used our capacity? Oh, uh, yeah, mine too. So, okay. which would we take yeah. for the award? For I, I'm just thinking about if, I, if I'm able to sole source that engineer, how do we get to the next meeting where we would approve to be with Chris, Chris Templeton? If we do that, I have to check with VTrans to make sure it meets the <coughs> yes. as well. But yeah, I just I'm really worried if we have to put that out to bid. We've got to develop the bid docs, and then we've got to take a look at the purchasing policy. Yeah, yeah. So there, I did. You and I went through. Okay, mm -hmm. we did together. It's five or six pages. It's very it's right. Tough. I just need to know when is it? Do we? I would I put that at the next meeting? Could we get that? If well, um, we're gonna we maybe should have an agenda conversation before the fourteenth because. Right. Right, because we're not going to have a lot of time on the You know, one thing you can do on the much else. You geniuses figure out a way to have an agenda that makes sure that when the two hours that we allocate for this conversation turns into 30 minutes, we can use the time. Well, we always have we always have that. What I'm what well, there's stuff that we might need to get done. Right. Yeah, that's that's, cool. thing. that's what he's saying. That's right. Right. Yeah. So we should put that. Yeah. I mean, what what we did this time was putting it a little bit after some of the stuff that we have to do, yeah. so that if it gets done sooner or lasts longer. But it's taken us, we, we, did, we did not withstanding. We let it go way long, and now we're here at 9.30. Well, but, right, but, yeah, we, yeah, we, just, but we might not have as much of a crowd next time. The 14th? Right. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. I don't know. We'll see. Um, okay, it so we're around here tonight. Yeah, that's one way to do it is to is we just put these urgent issues. Right, first. the stuff that we absolutely have to do should go yeah. first. Yeah. So we get them done. Yeah. And then we then we don't feel like oh we got to stay and do blah 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 right. blah blah blah. Yeah. All right, what we do have to do, but we have to talk about budget. So back to the count. So no, before you go to calendar, this we've done budget two different ways over the past, over the five years, and I think you guys have did it. One one of those ways for quite a long time before. So one the the first model when I first was on the board was no we've done three different ways. So we did a just starting like now every every meeting we had somebody presenting their budget item to right. us and then we as in December it was we met every single week. That was the first thing when I was on the board, first couple of years. 
third year maybe, we did a Saturday morning and we did a ton of right. work in and one had a lot of it done. session. <laughs> no, and no, the third that was the third when you and I worked on it. The third was that you guys worked on it offline and brought that budget to us. Um, Something I want to just mention, because we, don't, we, we can't pull it together this year, but I was noticing when I was doing my research on, what I, on how other towns get their work done, um, one, well, one of the things I, I noticed that I want to say out loud, in case I haven't said to all you guys, is that between either the, the treasurer being half-time or, or the town clerk being half-time, um, Every other town in Washington County that is our size, um, the select board assistant is, is from a half-time treasurer, it's the other half of a half-time treasurer or the other half of a half-time town clerk. Town clerk. Town clerk. Yeah. The town clerk is very much one of the ways Bobby that Bobby Brimblecombe. Right, Bobby. Yeah. Bobby Brimblecombe, Cabot seems to do it that way. I have to have a conversation with them. Uh, Mid Middlesex does it that way. Berlin, I think, does it somewhat that way. Yeah. But they have more staff so, in general because they're bigger. Right, they're bigger. But, but somehow, in the mix of function, there, every other town that, that is our size is getting select board assistant out of the, the clerk. out of, well, out of the budget. Yeah. Out yeah. of that budget. Out of one of those positions. Out of those positions. Yeah. And so that is something that we're gonna have to say out loud at our next meeting. Well, but you know what we're gonna one of the things I think you just have to accept is that whatever the status quo is, the individuals in it depend it. Mm -hmm. They never say, it's very rare that someone said, I mean, it does happen, but it's very rare that someone says, you know, I'm just not that busy. <laughs> right. 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 Well, so, and they find work to do it, and I think that what the work you guys did when you called around and compared guided us, and we should stay the course. So, yeah. so anyway, so the other thing I noticed, uh, thank you for letting me say those things out loud, because I do want to make sure everybody has that information. Um, the other thing I noticed we is that it tonight. I didn't say it all the way because yeah. it wasn't the one okay. that wrote to say it all the way. Yeah. But I didn't. Uh, I didn't. I wrote it. Yeah, but the other thing is Middlesex has a budget committee. And then when I was looking at the statutes, so these players. When I was looking at the statutes today, I noticed that that's actually anticipated in the municipal statute that we could have an advisory budget committee, not for this year, way too late. Right. But that is something that I've I want to put, about that before. put out there. As, so we could have the volunteers who are <coughs> out there apparently eager to help us get our work done. Um, you think? I didn't hear that. I didn't hear that. that. Did you hear that? I, no, I heard they, you they're out. eager to, I was outside. You were outside. Okay. No, no, no. We were told that missed. all we need to do is ask. So. Uh, I right. You, it. I, you definitely said that. Just, just go. Just on. well, we could have a budget, an advisory budget committee yeah. that could have been working a month so ago. So which model do we go? So to? Uh, that's just the right. So that's not for now. But that is, I think. I think if we're going to have network involved, the Saturday morning, and do like two bursts, we did two on Saturdays, Saturdays and, and hope that network will help us. We got lunch. Us. We had fun. What's fun? Yeah, as long as I am in favor of the Saturdays, as long mm -hmm. as we can have, uh, oh. the, you know, mimosas and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have maple corn so cater it. Yeah. No, we had fun, and we had we we had fun, and it gave us time. We weren't. I, I yeah, remember feeling right like, oh, we have time for this so to go way off the rails and laugh about something. So, uh, yeah, I mean, doing it every meeting is hard. Yeah, yeah. Because no, you, 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 you can't do it. You, you, you can't focus on it enough. We sh yeah, I mean. So, so the question is, do we want to start on? Her? Do we want to start on the nineteenth of November? Uh, do you want to start on the 12th of November? No, well, we don't want to start on the 26th. No, no, no. Not that week. I don't know that we're going to... The 19th? The 14th works. works. 26th. Yeah. Wait a minute here. The 9th or December 3rd. Wait. 12th, 19th, or December 3rd. And Those can we do 10 a.m.? Sure. This is 12, 19? 
11, 12, 11, 19, or December 3rd. I think we're going to have to do the 19th and December 3rd. Yeah, okay. Okay. let's do the 19th. Okay. And then okay. see. And let's hold December 3rd with a question mark. The 19th, mm -hmm. 11, what time 19, you say 10 a.m.? Yeah. 10 a.m. 10 here. 10 to 1. 10 to 1. And, and that would be here. And it would be what? No, we might want to do it at the town office no, because okay. it's smaller. And if network, we're going to need their help and yeah. they're going to be okay. in person. We need, though, these, don't we need to get, uh, what's her name, to agree to these dates? Well, I'm going to talk to Wendy. Okay, and so 12 well. 2, did you say? No, December 12 3, which is three. a Saturday, and 11 19, which is a Saturday. Yeah. And I will. See where Nemrick is at with what they can do to help us. Yeah. And so it's um, not the town, but we're meeting at the town office. Right. Let's be clear about that, folks. Right, town office. As opposed to the town hall. Right, right. So budget. So, and I also heard, um, okay, so and we have to award it as a special meeting. Yes, so we'll have to do that. Make super short. We have the ball the 19th at 10 and, and the 3rd at 10. 3rd at 10. And, and if we, why don't you award them as workshops? No, no that's not, no, that's those not an item. You have to right, do it as a special, an emergency, or a regular. Well, it's a special meeting. You just call it a workshop. Budget working. The, budget, the item can be called budget workshop. Yeah, right. 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 The item can be budget workshop. I'm just saying that because and the then people, people don't think that it's like, they, it's like it's a working <coughs> meeting. And then, it's not like and then it's a big, it's not a hearing. Right. All, and then all the people who show up to be interested are, that's our budget committee for next year. Right. Yeah, you know, my you motto. You can even tell anyone who shows up is welcome, but then they'll be on the budget committee. You know, my motto, and everybody in town knows it if you complain, you shall serve. Uh, yeah. So, this is budget. So, okay, so is there any more items of regular so, business? Because I did hear from Denise that we need to um, zip into executive session to hear her report on the. Um, what was it? The references for Reference. applicants. The references for the Oh, I don't think we need to do a second session, do we? Oh, we're we going to do it. You're not going to do reference reports with the camera. And oh, no, we're going to, I'm going to talk to you about dividing and conquering. Oh, I see. Oh, oh, so you just got yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 We can okay. do reference reports with so that's just Yeah. Well, okay. I thought she so you just that. need to assign. No. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Got it. All right. So is there any other? Items of business people want to raise? No. All right. All motion to adjourn. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. aye.